Good evening and welcome. Guten Abend und herzliche Willkommen. My name is Nicholas O'Brien. I'm the Irish ambassador to Germany and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Irish residents tonight here in Berlin, where we will celebrate our Irish night in. I'm particularly delighted to welcome writer and journalist Kate Ferguson, who is joining me tonight to present an Irish night in. Willkommen und guten Abend. Ich heiße Nicholas O'Brien, der irische Botschafter in Deutschland und befinde mich hier in meiner Residence mit Moderatorin Kate Ferguson für an Irish Night Inn. Ich freue mich sehr, dass Sie heute Abend mit dabei sind. We're delighted that you're joining us tonight to experience Irish culture and food zu Hause. It's the first time the Embassy has undertaken such an event, but we're very keen to find a way to connect with you during this difficult time and we hope that the experience both delights and inspires you. We're thankful to Tourism Ireland and to Board Beer for their support for this event. And it's a huge welcome from me as well. I'm delighted to have been invited to Ambassador O'Brien's home to enjoy an Irish night in with him and with so many of you watching around the world. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass Sie heute Abend virtuell teilnehmen, dass Sie sich entschieden haben, mit uns zu kochen, zu singen und Geschichten auszutauschen. We have a wonderful evening in store for you. Chef Andy Costello of the amazing Salt and Bone restaurant will be showing us how to make a delicious Irish meal. He'll be helped with that by actress Zoe Moore, known for her role in the German show Tatort. We'll try our hand at storytelling under the guidance of Irish writer extraordinaire Lisa McInerney. And we'll be treated to music from Irish singer Wallace Bird and a live session from Dundalk folk group The Merry Wallopers. So, without further ado, here's Andy and Zoe to explain what's on the menu. Hi guys, welcome to an Irish night in. My name is Andy, I'm coming from Salt and Bone Restaurant. We've developed this menu in partnership with Board Beer. My name's Zoe and we're here to cook a beautiful three course menu. So tonight, we're gonna be doing some homemade soda bread with some Irish smoked salmon, some crispy capers. Mm. After that, we're going to be moving on to a beautiful Irish entrecote, and that's going to be served with some smashed potatoes, some grilled scallion salsa verde. And then I'm going to take over for the dessert, because, well, let's face it. Dessert queen. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm going to make a New York cheesecake with a little twist, because we're going to add a little bit of Irish cream liqueur to it. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And if you want, you can follow along. If not, you can also download the recipes later and replicate them in your home. Have fun. What a delicious looking menu. Now, whether you're cooking along with us or not, we'd love to hear from you. You can get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag AnIrishNightIn. And we were delighted to have people from all over the world register for this event in places as far away as Peru, Tajikistan, Russia, South Africa, the United States, Germany, Austria, and of course, Ireland as well. Do let us know where you are and how you're enjoying this evening. Now, Nicholas, I think it's over to you to introduce our next speaker. Vielen Dank. Before we mit der Vorspeise beginnen, haben wir die Ehre, ein Botschaft von irischen Minister für Landwirtschaft und Ernährung, Charlie McConnellog, überbringen zu dürfen. Before we start with the first course, I'm delighted that we are joined by Ireland's Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Charlie McConnellog. Good Abend and good evening. I'm delighted to be able to join everyone in Germany who is participating in an Irish night in. I'd like to tell you all a little bit about Irish food, which is at the heart of our culture and our country, as well as tonight's event. The backbone of Irish agriculture is the family farm. I myself come from a family farm in Donegal in the northwest of Ireland, and growing up on a farm has given me a passionate interest in the agri-food sector, and also a unique understanding of the phrase farm to fork. Ireland has a population of 5 million people, but produces enough food to feed 40 million. So we export our food to over 150 countries. In fact, we export 90% of the food we produce and high quality is our trademark. In Germany, I know that you are very familiar with Irish butter, but we also export meat such as beef, other dairy products and prepared consumer foods to Germany. 
In fact, our fastest growing export to Germany is lamb. We are committed to developing our agri-food sector while protecting our natural environment, which after all is our most important natural resource. Ireland is a global leader in terms of the safety, sustainability and traceability of our meat and dairy production on family farms. We have a justified and hard-earned reputation for quality. In fact, last year Ireland launched the world's first national grass-fed standard, which will let consumers know that their beef comes from pasture-raised cattle. I know that tonight many of you will cook a meal using Irish ingredients. This may be your Irish beef, smoked salmon or cream liqueur. I hope you enjoy the experience and that cooking a meal together with Irish ingredients is something you will continue to do in the future. I would like to thank the Embassy, Board Bia, Tourism Ireland for all coming together to organise this great event. I'd like to thank you Ambassador O'Brien for inviting us into your home tonight. I hope that all of you at home enjoy this experience of Irish culture including the music and storytelling, as well as the food and drink. Guten Appetit and Ban Tatnev as Vela. Thank you very much, Minister. Vielen Dank, Herr Minister. Now, if you didn't previously register, you can still download the recipes from our website, which is shown below, dfa.ie slash an Irish night in. For those of you already registered to participate with the event tonight, you'll have received instructions on how to prepare the starter. Now, you should have baked the bread in advance, and we saw lots of examples of this on Instagram already, and of course the butter should be left out for an hour. If you're joining us now via Facebook or on our website and your butter is straight out of the fridge, you might have a little bit of work to do. But if you didn't already bake the bread, it doesn't matter. You can improvise for now, and keep the recipe for hand for a later date. There's nothing quite like Irish soda bread. Diejenigen, die sich bereits angemeldet haben, sollten schon eine E-Mail bekommen haben mit ein paar Tipps, für was man schon im Voraus vorbereiten kann. Aber falls Sie nicht die Gelegenheit dazu hatten, ist auch nicht schlimm. Now it's over to Andy and Zoe, who will show us how to make this lovely starter. So we're going to start things off tonight with an Irish soda bread. This is super easy, super straightforward. You don't need any bread skills, any kneading skills. Everything goes in the bowl. We mix it together and then we chuck it in the oven. So we're going to start things off with 180 grams of plain white flour. Next thing we have is 180 grams of wholemeal flour. Why do you use two flours? The wholemeal flour, you just get a lot more flavour. Oh, it really nice. brings a lot to the texture and the flavour. The white flour is super nice, but with the two of them combined, you just get a much more well-balanced flavour. White okay. flour by itself is just like, lacks a depth of flavour that you get mm. with the wholemeal. So next thing up, we have natron or bicarb of soda. This just helps it rise. And a teaspoon of salt. We, wir haben zwei verschiedene Arten von Mehl, die Andi jetzt hier reingemacht hat. Einmal ein normales Weizenmehl und dann ein äh, Vollkornweizenmehl. Dann das, das Vollkorn ist da, um einfach ein bisschen mehr Tiefe und ein bisschen mehr Geschmack da reinzukriegen in das Brot. Dann hat er noch Natron reingebracht. Wie viel war das? Natron. Äh, ein Teaspoon. Ein Teelöffel. Ah, ein, ein Teelöffel und ein Teelöffel Salz. Genau. Das war's bisher. So, und dann nächste kommt... So, coming up next, we got some buttermilk. It's about 450 grams. 500 grams, somewhere in the middle. Also, dann kommt hier Buttermilch rein. 450 gram, 500 gram ungefähr. Das Ding ist ja bei Irish Soda Bread, ist, dass man es auch nach Gefühl macht, ne? Ja. Yeah. You kind of base it around, like, what it looks like, and you kind of add, and... The, the whole trick with it is, is not to knead it. When you knead it too much, it comes out super smooth. When you don't knead it so much, it comes out really nice and craggly. Like, you get loads of big, chunky bits, so it's all about kneading it as little as possible. That's like the classic Irish soda bread, right? Yeah, I mean, that's it's how like I super know. old school, like really yeah. simple. But old school really is sometimes easy. the best way to yeah, do it. Yeah, for sure. Also, er vermengt das jetzt oh, so, dass es gerade so alles zusammenkommt, weil äh, wenn man es zu viel knetet, dann äh, wird es einfach viel zu fein. Und man will eigentlich bei einem Irish soda bread, dass es ein bisschen äh, rauer ist, also ein bisschen grober. 
damit es äh, diese typische Struktur bekommt vom Brot. Ihr werdet das später sehen. Oh, do you have to preheat the oven for that? Yeah. So we started off, it goes in at 220. Mm -hmm. And then we push it down to 200 after right. 20 minutes. Okay, also man muss den Ofen natürlich vorheizen. Und äh, man macht das Brot bei 220 Grad am Anfang rein. Und nach 20 Minuten dreht man dann den Ofen die Temperatur runter auf 200 Grad. What is that? Does it, just so it doesn't get brown as much and cook? So you get a really nice crust when you put it in straight away at 220. It's hot enough that you get some really nice caramelization on the outside. Mm. And then for the last 20 minutes, it just cooks the inside. Yeah, beautiful. So Look at that. You got a nice, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all you got to do. Cool. So I really like to cook this in a cast iron pan. It oh. just gives a really, really nice, even temperature. And that's already hot, isn't it? Just a little bit, yeah. Because it takes a little while to heat up in the oven. So we just heat it on your lowest heat for like five minutes. Mm. So what if people don't have a cast iron pan? Can uh, you just put it in the oven? Baking sheet, anything. You can put it down on top of anything. Cool. You just get a really nice little crispy bit on the bottom. Mm. So, perfect. Now I just need a little knife. Also Andy hat das jetzt das Brot gerade in die Cast Iron Pan gemacht, ähm, weil es hier drin ziemlich gut backt. Man kann es natürlich auch einfach so im Ofen backen, also einfach auf einem, äh, einem Backblech. Cut a little cross. Yeah, that's the classic, isn't it? That's how my granny used to make it. Yeah, that's it. It's so easy. So, yeah. now we put it in the oven. So now we leave that for 20 minutes on 220 and then we drop it down to 200. And then how, does, how long does it stay in the oven after the 20 minutes? Uh, 20 minutes and 20 minutes. Ooh. Yeah, it's looking good. So at this point you just want to check to make sure your bread is fully done. So we just flip it over and just give it a little tap on the bottom when you hear that super hollow sound, you know you're in a good place. Cool. Yeah. Oh, it's beef. Soda bread. Super easy. But you're going to rest this now, right? Yeah, I'm going to leave this for about an hour or so, just mm -hmm. to let it properly dry out and firm up a little bit. Right. That's just really when the full flavor comes out of it. So ideally, you would prep this the day before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Th this will last super fresh for at least three days. Nice. It's not like a lot of breads where they're only good on the day. Soda bread, like three, four days in the toaster. Perfect. Also Andy hat jetzt äh, das Brot aus dem Ofen geholt. Wenn man auf dem äh, Rücken klopft, dann kann man schauen, ob das Brot durch ist, weil es dann ein wenig hohl klingt. Und äh, jetzt lässt das ein paar Stunden ruhen, damit man das, damit sich äh, das Brot quasi, dass der, der ganze Geschmack da rauskommt. Weil das braucht ein paar Stunden, einfach um, um komplett äh, auszukühlen und dann äh, den ganzen Geschmack zu entfalten, den es haben kann. Ähm, also macht man dieses Brot am besten auch am Tag davor. So, next up, guys, we've got our compound butter. So we've got about 200 grams of gorgeous Irish butter, some freshly chopped dill, chives, lemon zest. And then we're just going to add to that some salt and some pepper. Beautiful. Yeah. So we start off with our butter in here. Got a, got a teaspoon of dill. Need a fork. Teaspoon of chives. And like maybe like a teaspoon and a half of lemon zest. This is going to bring so much flavor into the butter and it's going to work really, really well with the, um, with the salmon. Ooh, that's a lot so of salt. So that's unsalted butter. Oh, so that then really? allows us to control the salt content. And you're talking about five turns of pepper. And then all we have to do is mash all this up together. Ideally, you do this the day before. So that allows a lot of time for then all the, all the flavors to kind of meld together. Mm. That sounds great. Yeah. Also was Andy hier gemacht hat, ist, dass er 200 Gramm ungesalzene Butter genommen hat. You kind of soften it up before, right? Yeah, you want to really leave it soft. out of the fridge for about an hour or yeah. so. Yeah. Also die Butter ist schon ein bisschen ges äh, weicher geworden, weil er sie eine Stunde lang schon aus dem Kühlschrank gelassen hat. Und dann hat er Dill, ähm, Schnittlauch und äh, Zitronenschale äh, reingemacht. Sowohl als Salz und auch Pfeffer. 
und äh, mischt das jetzt alles zusammen. Und er hat auch gesagt, am besten macht man das schon einen Tag vorher, damit das einfach so richtig in die Butter, die ganzen Flavors da reinkommen können und über Nacht dann eben richtig da in die Butter wirken. Und das geht dann nämlich richtig gut mit dem Brot, was wir jetzt gerade backen. Next we're gonna move on to the capers. Capers bring this lovely briny deliciousness into, onto the plate. So what we're gonna do with them is just drop them in the fryer. We got it like a centimeter of wrap soil heating up here. These are gonna bubble like hell whenever we drop them in. And then once the bubbling slightly subsides, then they're done. So they're gonna puff up, get all crispy and mm. delicious. Kind of step away so it splashes. Yeah. They come in a brine. So what we do is we just leave them sitting in some paper and then it dries them out a little. What we want to have ready is some paper towels because we don't want to stay in there for too long. Mm. Once the bubbling starts subsiding, then you know they're pretty much done. That's all the water has escaped. Mm. Also Andy hat jetzt gerade die Kapern in das heiße Öl geworfen. Ich glaube, es ist Rapsöl. Ja. Ähm, hatte ein Zentimeter äh, Öl eingefüllt, das heiß werden lassen und die Kapern reingeworfen. Um, and you dry them before you put them yeah, in there, right? Yeah, we just leave them yeah. on some paper. So also vorher die Kapern schon austrocknen mit also den, den Saft, den sie da vorher, in dem sie sind, äh, loswerden und die trocknen, dann reinwerfen und dann macht man es ungefähr eine Minute, right? Or like a minute or two. Yeah, zwei, drei Minuten. Zwei, drei Minuten. Zwei, drei Minuten da drin lassen, bis äh, die, die ganzen Blasen da weg sind und damit dann das Wasser aus den Kapern rausgegangen ist. Dann werden sie richtig schön crispy, also richtig knusprig und äh, man kann sie ideal dann eben für das Brot und für den Lachs mit der Butter dann benutzen. Das ist dann eine super Kombination zusammen. And they're done already. Ja, yeah. easy. It, it might get a little messy, but um, it's worth it, isn't it? Ja, yeah. crispy, briny, deliciousness. So guys, now it's just putting all the bits together. We've got our soda bread, it's had a bit of resting time. So I generally just cut across the cross. Oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful cross section. Oh, that reminds me of home. So then just to bring it all together, take a nice big thick slice. Yeah. You don't want to be stingy on the slice. No, no. Fat slice and lots of butter. Yeah. Lots and lots of butter. <laughs> If you're unsure, just add more butter. <laughs> So, you start off in a nice thick slather of butter. Is that Irish salmon? Yeah, this is that Irish smoked salmon. It's as nice. high quality as you can get. It's organic. Beautiful. So You can get Irish smoked salmon in like German supermarkets. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty widely available now. Yeah. So we just kind of crinkle it up just to give it a little bit more surface area. You don't want a little skinny slice. There we go with our crispy capers. Oh. Just dot a few around. So you just get these like little bursts of crispiness every now and again. This bread is all about not being stingy. You just kind of yeah. want to You're cooking for family generous. and friends. It's all about just going over the top. Yeah, you want to be generous. Yeah. This little radish crust here just gives an extra little layer of flavor. Looks super pretty as well. After that, we just want to go with a little, little bit of lemon juice. Mm. Some pepper. And a little bit of olive oil. Ooh, olive oil. Yeah, just brings all the flavors together. Gives it an extra layer of juiciness. I don't think I've ever had that. Yeah. It's really interesting. And here we go. Oh, that's gorgeous, Andy. Also, Andy has jetzt den, uh, das irische Brot genommen, ein Stück davon. Und da darf man auch ruhig großzügig sein. Also schön ein großes Stück davon nehmen. Darauf dann die Butter, die wir vorbereitet haben, rauf machen. Auch wieder hier großzügig sein. Wir sind hier nicht da, um zu sparen. Es ist ja auch was für Freunde. Deswegen auch dann mit dem äh, Lachs. Der ist tatsächlich aus Irland. Das ist ein irischer Lachs. Den kriegt man auch hier in Supermärkten inzwischen. Der ist ziemlich weit verbreitet. Den kann man hier schön ähm, auf das Brot verteilen. Ein bisschen hochbauschen, damit er nicht so flach drauf liegt. Wir wollen da auch groß, großzügig sein. Dann hat er das noch verfeinert mit den Kapern, mit der Brunnenkresse und äh, noch die Zitrone und Pfeffer. Und am Ende, das war sein kleiner Geheimtipp, noch ein bisschen Olivenöl rüber machen, 
Weil es das irgendwie noch... Ja, also bringt alles zusammen. Ja, yeah, dass es alles nochmal zusammenbringt. You wanna have a taste of it? Yeah, for sure. That looks beautiful. I love how easy the soda bread is to make. I find often the best food is actually the easiest to prepare. And your photos and comments have already been streaming in. Let's take a look at how you have been getting on. Wow, look at this. So Chris M, he has been making some soda bread as well. He says, our soda bread is coming up nicely here in Munich. Well done, Chris, that looks really nice. Arno Kifa has been baking as well. She's right in the process. She says she is busy with her starters. That looks like a lovely meal coming on there as well. Got a couple more comments coming in. Jan Patrick J says, greetings to the Ireland class from Rotwell. Hi there, Jan Patrick, nice that you're watching. Reina Kopkurta says, hello from Schulewingendorf and the Ireland class are there. Lovely to have you along as well. And then we have a message from the Irish pub. My home economics teacher would be buzzing at my soda bread. It's that good. Well, that is absolutely fabulous. Keep up the cooking. Well done. Now, Nicholas, all this talk of food has got me thinking. You've been in Berlin since August 2019, I yep. think. Is there any food from Ireland that you really miss? Oh, well, I suppose I miss my mammy's apple tarts. Um, but you know, they, 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 they've good strudel here, but it's not as good as the apple tarts. Uh, I think like everybody Irish, it's the tea bags. The tea um, bags are huge, yeah. You know, tea bags, you have to get Irish tea bags. And it's Barry's or Lions. For us, it's Barry's. Uh, I know for other people, it's Lions. I believe your, your mother actually is a Lions drinker, she is, is that right? She is, so therefore, so we split loyalties. It's yeah. Lions, Lions and Barry's. Um, yeah, listen, it's, it's, it's things like this. Everybody loves like crisps, um, tea bags, digestive biscuits, yeah. That's so my true. sister sends me little, they're little, like little food parcels she sends me, so it's great. It's a nice little yeah. care package. Yeah. And now that you've brought up care packages, we actually have an example of one of the <coughs> boxes that 115 lucky winners received in advance of this event. Let's take a look at it. You can guide me through it. So here it is. And let's take a look at what's inside. So first of all, oh. we have these cards, don't we? What's on these cards, Nicholas? Now, the cards are important. Uh, the, the cards have the recipes for tonight. They also have s s s some of the, the tales and, and uh, some of the songs. That's all it is. Uh, but that being said, it doesn't matter if you, if you haven't registered, you haven't got the cards. Those who registered already got them by email. Those who didn't, you can still get them on our website tonight. And we also have some goodies then. We, 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 we have... Um, well, we have a bottle of some stout, Irish stout, we, some shortbread, we have some and winter gin as well, yeah. and some, some relish. So I think that is more than enough to keep everybody uh, happy tonight. So, um, Nicholas, you've talked about the food you miss from Ireland, but surely you must have acquired a taste for some German things as well. Have you started eating currywurst, for example? Yeah, currywurst is, yeah, yeah, ambition. Uh, <laughs> Not, 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 not too much. I suppose in Germany, um, two, two things I, I, I really do like. Um, one is the apple strudel, of course, is, is great here. And it's, it's all over Germany, but particularly in Bavaria, in Bayern, uh, this is lecker. Um, and then, of course, the other thing in Germany is, is, is the beer. Uh, Germany has some fabulous beers. Uh, every small town you go to has their own little brewery. And all beer in Germany is manufactured under 1516 law, the purity laws. So it sets out what beer you can, what, what ingredients you can put in, uh, hops or water or whatever. So it sets out the ingredients and, and you may put, there's nothing else you can put in. So therefore there's no chemicals. So yeah, so both the beer and the apple strudel. Two, two classics. What, yeah, what about you, Kate? What, what do you like here? Well, I like a lot of things. One thing I always think about in, in terms of things that you can't get very easily in Ireland is something that my mother always talks about because she's German and she moved to Ireland, you know, over 40 years ago. And she used to always say that when she first moved to Ireland, she couldn't get quack for love nor money. Now, this is kind of a mix of yogurt and cheese. It's used yeah. in a lot of cakes here as a key ingredient. 
and she always says that she could chart you know Ireland's economic development uh, based on the availability of quack so at the beginning it was completely unavailable and then over time you could get it into the fancier yeah. shops and now it's in okay. every stall in Aldi and Lidl so yeah. she definitely says um, that that's something that she's noticed um, throughout her time in Ireland in terms of things that I miss though when I'm here um, a big dirty bag of chipper chips uh, doused in vinegar there's just nothing like it here and um, pomace really isn't the same I also bring tea bags with me every time I'm back. During the pandemic, <clears throat> I've been lucky enough to be sent some. Um, I'm stocked up at the moment. I think Jacob's cream crackers as well. That's something I really miss from home and I'm always uh, packing them when I, when I get back. I think though, this is something that is going to spark some strong opinions. So if you are an Irish person living abroad, let us know what food you really miss from home. And if you're um, an Irish person in Ireland, let us know what food you couldn't do without. We'd love to hear from you. Now, of course, this evening isn't just about food. It's also about having some crack. And we are so lucky to have the wonderful storyteller, Lisa McInerney, on hand to offer just that. Those of you who have registered for this event will have got your game cards via email. Now is the time to take those out. If you're just tuning in though, you can download them from the website dfa.ie and Irish Night In. Now, Nicholas, I'm sure you'd agree with me that being able to think on your feet and make people laugh is a very cherished trait in Ireland. And sometimes it can even get you out of a scrape or two. So let's go to Lisa now, who will show us exactly how that is done. passion to get those idiosyncrasies right on the page. So on that basis, I want to help you tonight to get in touch with your inner Irish character. So I hope to teach you how to spin a yarn and tell a story the way an Irish person does. So Irish people love to tell tall tales. And by tall tales, I mean, of course, stories that are rooted enough in reality to potentially be real, absolutely, but just daft enough, just deliciously entertaining enough that you might suspect that the teller could be embellishing the facts a little bit. I mean, it's not that an Irish person telling you an anecdote will be lying to you per se. Yeah, I mean, not strictly. It's just that we are entertainers at heart and we take that proverb very seriously. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. My grandfather, he was a man who could tell like the most tremendous lies with an utterly straight face. Like, and he learned this skill sitting at the bar with his friends and they would kind of like engage in verbal jousting, you know. So this is a group of people who were in competition with one another over who was the most entertaining, like who could come up with the best insults, who had the best turns of phrase, who had the best comic timing. My grandfather once attended a funeral with a man who would have considered himself to be quite sophisticated and my grandfather to be quite simple and common. And like it's true to an extent, you know, my grandfather, he didn't come from an illustrious background. He was a carpenter, he had eight children. He didn't have the money or the time for refined pursuits. So this sophisticated guy said to my grandfather, well, that's a very nice suit you're wearing today. Yes, indeed. But really, shouldn't it have a waistcoat? And my grandfather, like quick as lightning and utterly serious, utterly serious, responded, oh, it does, but I couldn't wear it. Unfortunately, it's riddled with bullet holes. So you see, you have a ridiculous response. It couldn't be serious, like it couldn't be serious. However, the person saying it seems to be honest and is working very, very hard at looking like he's telling the truth. So, I want you tonight to fabricate an excuse in the Irish style for why you're late to meet a friend. Now, there are rules, there are guidelines to follow here. These kind of excuses, they have to be good natured. The aim is to make the person to whom you're giving the excuse laugh, not 
for them to feel stupid. They should be aware that something's not quite right with your story, but they should also be so amused by how you're telling it that they want to know how it ends. They shouldn't be made to feel impatient or angry or disrespected. They should feel like you trust them enough to understand what you're doing. This should be an exercise in camaraderie. And of course, you should never do this for something that is genuinely important or genuinely sensitive. I mean, you have to be able to read your audience. You have to be able to think on your feet. Invent a story just for them. So there's an example on your game card that follows the formula. Good intentions and unforeseen calamity. Even better intentions and then an outcome so ludicrous. It could be real. And don't forget, you have to tell your story with confidence, with a straight face and with a twinkle in your eye. All right, so I suppose it'll have to be me who gives this a go. Nicholas, um, I know I was a little bit late for this evening um, and I just wanted to say I'm really sorry and just to have a chance to explain to you what happened because we were so flustered earlier, we didn't really get to talk. Basically, um, I was so intent on being early for this that I left my apartment hours in advance. And when I arrived here, I had, I had four hours to kill and I was just much too embarrassed to actually ring the bell and you know, disturb you when you might, might have been busy getting ready. So what I decided to do was to take a walk because your residence is beautifully situated here in the Grunewald Forest in Berlin. And so I did, I, I started walking and I was just really, my mind was very occupied with the nature and how beautiful everything was. And I was absolutely astounded to encounter a wild boar sitting on a tree, up at the very top. And a wild boar, a Wildschwein in, in Germany, they are common around here and they have quite a reputation. There was a story that went viral over mm. the summer and you probably heard all about it, where there was a, a man nude bathing and a wild boar came along, stole his laptop and the man had to go chasing after it. This was all captured on film and it went around the world. So my first thought was that this was a dangerous situation to be in. So I thought I would try and just tiptoe past the wild boar. But that was not possible at all because as soon as I got close, the wild boar growled at me. And I thought at that point that the strangest bit of this story was that there was a wild boar up a tree. I thought, this is, this is quite odd, this is a story to tell. But that actually was not the most interesting thing about this wild boar. What really stunned me was that he was talking Irish, as Gaeilge. And I, I don't know about you, but I've never actually encountered a wild boar speaking Irish before. And of course, he got talking, you know, gifted the gab. And he asked me where I was from. I told him, I asked him where he was from originally. He said he was from County Wexford. So of course we were talking about people that he knows, people that I know. And I made the mistake then of saying, look, why are you up the tree? And that was probably the worst thing I did all evening. Because as I said, gift of the gab. He was just waffling. And he told me this sob story about how he'd been kicked out by this stunning swine, how he was really struggling during lockdown. And I said, you know, Padre, I understand that it's, it's difficult, but a lot of us are, are going through the same thing. And actually, you know, I, I, have to, I have to be somewhere. But any time that I tried to back away, he'd just open his mouth and he'd see these massive fangs. I don't know if you've been close to a wild boar yourself, but it's, it's a quite a scary experience. They don't have many teeth, but the teeth they do have are extremely sharp. And it became apparent to me that the only thing I could do was wait for Padder to bore himself to sleep. And I waited and I waited and I waited. And that only happened at three minutes to seven. And at that point I had to dash. And you probably noticed when I arrived here that I was very flushed and out of breath. So I just wanted to clear that up and to say I'm really sorry and I, I hope you understand. Do you understand? Absolutely and, and that, that's not a tall tale at all. Sure. Everybody knows Potter around here. Potter is the Irish speaking boar at the end of the garden and he goes wandering down in the Grunewald sometimes but yeah Potter, Potter goes to the Cunner and the Gaelic classes here in Berlin and he lowers kind to got law. Does he? Because it's interesting because he, he did mention that he knew you, but he said that he had the impression that you were avoiding him a little bit recently. Is that, is oh, that true? Yeah, he talks way too much. He does, Potter, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you have to get away from Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do. I mean, he, he is a charming boar, but yeah. you know, there's a bit much. Auf meine Wildschwein-Geschichte, den Botschafter überzeugt hat, weiß ich nicht. 
Aber weiter geht's auf alle Fälle mit Musik. Music is a huge part of Irish culture and like with storytelling, it's very much a communal and it's often improvised experience. You could just as easily get a session going around the kitchen table as you could in an Irish pub. I'm really excited this evening to introduce our next guest, Wallace Bird. Wallace is what we call in Berlin a Val Ber Berlinerin, a person not originally from Berlin, but who's chosen to make the city their home. She's one of Ireland's best known musicians here in Germany, and her new album is titled Woman. Tonight, she's going to start off the session with her song Home. So now, Wallace, over to you. Hello, welcome to Irish Night In. My name is Wallace Bird. I'm here in Berlin and we're showing you some Irish culture uh, in the context of food, home and storytelling. So um, with that, I'm going to sing you one of my songs. It's called uh, Home and it's sung in Shano style, which means old style and it's uh, a cappella. Uh, this song is about uh, my partner and uh, modern love in a uh, traditional love in a modern age. So, it's called Home. <clears throat> All I ever wanted was to settle down and marry, laugh and love and hopefully have a child. Have our family surround us, friendships that never die. Well, we can try, we can try, we can try. Oh, we can try, we can try, we can try. There are times in life so good that looked me in the eye, but I was busy, so it passed me by. But today I got a ticket for a long journey home to you and I. Oh, home to you and I. I'm not good for you right now. I'm good for you forever. There's so much to you makes me turn the page. My blind dedication is no surprise. I was right that very first day. When you rolled into the kitchen with a basket bearing chicken and a look of mischief pouring from your eyes and over drinks and songs and dad jokes I kept Touch in your hand for your attention and I kiss you in my mind. The sun was rolling upwards and you were going home. My head stayed drunk on you for such a long time. So I moved to this country where you reside so we can try, we can try, we can try. Oh, we can try, we can try, we can try. Dear Mother God in heaven, you're one hell of a woman. I'll believe that it's for something till I die. If you put two and two together and forget about the maths, and give us three, or four, or five. Well, we can try, we can try, we can try. Shane, that's it. Okay, I'm going to sing you um, very traditional Irish songs. Um, this will be my very first time singing this, so I'm pretty excited about it, considering it's such a well-known Irish tune. Uh, the earliest uh, recorded um, date that this uh, was, was written is the late 16th century, and it's likely that uh, sailors were singing it. And um, it's been covered today by crazy amounts of artists uh, as, why, as, very, as, as different as um, Metallica, Thin Lizzy, and my favourite uh, version of this is from an Irish band called Lancome. So it's called The Wild Rover. Hey! 
I think I may have a new favourite version of the Wild Rover that was really beautiful and home was gorgeous too. There's something really special isn't there about the Shanno style, that old style unaccompanied, it's raw and it's vulnerable, it's just beautiful. And I have to say that Wallace Bird always reminds me of my really early years in Berlin because I moved here in 2012 and my boyfriend, now husband, um, he made me a playlist at the time and one of the songs on it was To My Bones by Wallace yeah. Bird which you probably know as well. And to this day, it's just my pick me up. Um, when it's cold and dark, it's 5 a.m., I'm on the way to work and I'm just miserable. I put that song on and I'm just instantly rejuvenated. I'm a teenager around a campfire drinking Dutch gold and it just works every time. And it really did make me think about how much we're all relying on music, especially during the pandemic. And I'm sure you know a lot about all the communities here across Germany that have been thriving um, and promoting Irish music. Uh, uh, absolutely, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's one of the great things I think about, about the Irish communities and the organisations here in Germany, just the support they offer each other. Um, in, in, my, in my first period here before the lockdown, it was great to get out and travel around Germany and just see the, the wealth of Irish music, Irish dancing as well, uh, Irish games. Uh, there are several, uh, quite a number of GAA clubs all across Germany. Um, including one with, with, with an all-German hurling team, which is which is really <laughs> brilliant. Um, but yeah, I suppose our, you know, like Irish music, it's part of what we are. It helps create links back to home, and it's difficult to travel home at the moment, as we know. So you know, it, it, I think it really helps people. It's a support mechanism as well. There's a very large number of Irish societies here in Germany, uh, Deutsche Gesellschaft, all all over Germany, and just want to say thank you to all of them tonight. Uh, to them, to the GA clubs, to all the organisations here in Germany for the support which they offer to the Irish, to the Irish community in, in their local town. That's really what it's about. We can do a certain amount, but you know, really it's up to the, the, the organisations all across Germany. And, and they bring music and dance and a richness to the local communities. Absolutely, there is so much happening here. And we have been getting more and more of your photos and comments in. Here we can get one up. Look at that salmon starter, that looks absolutely beautiful. Kata Rabbit, nice job. Let's see, we've also been hearing from a couple of the rest of you. Let's see what else we have coming up. We get some more social media? 
uh, we're working. We're working Absolutely. on it. Yeah. Well, well, well it, we can we can see with this. There's a huge uh, variety and a fantastic amount of talent here in Germany. Uh, of people who play Irish music, of people who bake, um, and, 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 and all kinds of uh, societies and organisations across Germany. Um, for those of you joining us tonight, we, we hope you enjoy playing along with Wallace, our next guest, and later with the Mary Wallopers. Feel free to play a song, add it to the Instagram stories or Facebook with our hashtag, an Irish Night In. It'll be great to see the virtual session coming together during this event. And before we move on to our main course, it's time for part two of our word games with Lisa McInerney. If you have them, do take out those cards. Our next topic is slagging. There's really no proper translation of this in German. Verarschen might come close, but nothing really describes that peculiarly Irish ability to both make fun of a person <coughs> and show your respect for them at the same time. Here's Lisa McInerney to show us how it's done. English friends would have the term b Right, let's talk slagging. Okay, so if you're English, this word slagging might have a whole different connotation and it would not be as much fun. Uh, but instead, our English friends would have the term banter, pretty much, for, for this. In Ireland, slagging means to make fun of somebody. Um, but in a good-natured and very creative way. Usually it involves you knowing the other person well enough to trust that they'll understand your intention and know that, you know, you don't mean to hurt them. And also knowing them well enough to be able to make fun of things that they've done in the past or things like personal quirks, past experiences, something maybe to do with their hometown or their school or their university, something like that. So slagging done right, it's not making fun of someone's appearance or making some wild claim that has nothing to do with their lives or their experiences. It has to make sense on some level. There has to be an element of truth to it. Oh, and it should also offer the rate of response. The retort is very important in Irish discourse. The whole idea is... You need to be witty enough to dish it out, but you also have to be tough enough to take it. So this is a truth about Irish people. We're very funny, especially when we shouldn't be. We employ jokes to alleviate tension, and then we also deploy jokes to exacerbate tension. We're verbose and we're messy, and we do not wish to be taken seriously, unless of course we do, and you know, you need to know the difference. Um, we don't say anything directly if instead there's a chance of coming at it from the side. And this can be a bad thing, definitely. And probably there's some argument to be made for our still dealing with a kind of collective trauma for generations of oppression and poverty, which makes us wary and it makes us indirect and it makes us tough and it makes us keen to hide behind humour so that we don't have to confront our issues Hey, but that's for a different day. Right now we're learning how to slag each other. Oh, and very important. Bear in mind, if an Irish person slags you, it's because they like you. An Irish person wouldn't bother to try and exchange these kind of uh, funny barbs with someone they didn't like. They'd just ignore them or they'd sneer at them. And there is no connection between sneering and slagging. Absolutely none. So I remember a news story from a few years back um, where Niall Horan, who is the Irish member of the band One Direction, he got into trouble with his international fans because he was caught on video greeting his Irish fans at an airport who were, they were waiting there for him and he called them a shower of... Yeah, I'm not going to finish that. Uh, but essentially, something that seemed very obviously light-hearted to us came across as highly insulting to the rest of the world. <laughs> So examples, examples. You see, the problem is I can't slag you because I don't know you. Uh, but let me think of some great Irish insults I've heard. OK, suppose that you're a person who's known to be quite uh, miserly with money. 
you don't enjoy spending money. So I might say about you, you're so mean, I'd say you'd peel an orange in your pocket, would you? Would you eat your dinner out of a drawer? I'd say you wouldn't even spend Christmas. So an art form that works very nicely for this kind of Irish custom is the limerick. Uh, limericks, as you may know, are five line poems and they follow the rhyming pattern A-A-B-B-A. So that might be an American tourist named Bill decided to visit Loch Gill, but he couldn't find it, though he was behind it. So maybe he's looking still. It's not certain where the name Limerick came from for these kind of poems. They didn't, I don't think they originated in Ireland, but they are definitely connected in some way with the county of Limerick. And they're irreverent. They're often extremely crude. So they work brilliantly for a little bit of slagging. And that's what you have to do now. That's what I want you to do. Use your fondness for and familiarity with your friends to write a funny Limerick about someone. Like the example on your cards. Slagging them. Be merciless. And um, hopefully you'll still have friends at the end of it. I'll be your friend. Don't worry. It's a funny thing about Irish people that we often show our affection by poking fun at one another. Now, Nicholas, I believe you've taken this opportunity to pen a limerick of your own? Just after your story about, story about Potter, I thought I might just jot down a few words. Ah, can we hear them? There was a news reader called Kate who had a habit of being late. She told tale of a bore that caused quite a furore, but because she's a mate, pulling my leg is her trait. That was beautiful. I think it must have been a very special person that inspired Absolutely. you to, to come up with those <laughs> words. Lovely. Please do have a go at this at home in English or German. We would love to hear some of your contributions. Just post them onto our Facebook or Twitter channels. Haben Sie auch Lust, ein Limerick zu schreiben? Probieren Sie es doch einfach mal aus. Es geht leichter, als man denkt. We're going to take a short break at this point to let you write your limericks or if you're cooking to get your ingredients ready for the main course. But if you're doing neither of those things, we have something else for you to enjoy, don't we, Nicholas? Absolutely. Ireland is such a wonderful, diverse country with so many attractions, both natural and cultural, for everyone to explore. It's really sad that it's just not possible to visit at the moment, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. And when the situation allows for travel again in the future, we'll be very happy to greet you in Ireland. Es war ein schwieriges Jahr, aber wir freuen uns sehr darauf, wenn wir alle wieder reisen können. Wir haben ein Video von Entdecke Irland, das uns zeigt, was uns in der Zukunft erwartet. So now we have some gorgeous footage of Ireland for you to enjoy.
Willkommen zurück. Das war sehr schön. Der wilde Atlantische Berg in Irland ist landschaftlich unglaublich beeindruckend. Und es lohnt sich auf jeden Fall, diesen zu besuchen. Zwar komme ich selbst aus Dublin, doch jeder weiß, dass die Wurstkuste Irlands unglaublich schön ist. Welcome back to an Irish night in. If you're just joining us, I'm Kate Ferguson and I am so honoured to have been invited to Ambassador O'Brien's home to enjoy an evening of Irish culture. We've already had Andy Costello and Zoe Moore show us how to make a delicious salmon starter. We've had music from Wallace Bird and we've had some crack with storyteller Lisa McInerney as well. We have been hearing from you as well. We've got some lovely comments coming in. Uh, lots of people have been making soda bread, I believe. Um, some comments on the food and drink that people miss as well. A lot of things coming in about tato crisps, so you're not alone with that one. Um, I think a lot of people think here that in Germany, paprika has a monopoly mm. on crisps. You know, everything is paprika flavored and they just cannot get what they want here. No cheese and onion. No cheese and onion, absolutely. So let's take a look now. Um, Eileen O'Sullivan, oh, when you can't visit home, what a lovely set of you here in the Irish night in. Thank you for joining us, Eileen. That looks like a really cozy night in that you're having there. Greetings from Cologne, from Finvola Schetza, and a group of true Irish ladies we call ourselves. Kalina, all around Ireland. Tommy Flynn is missing it. Emma, this Irish night in is not boring at all with the lovely, oh, well, this is a lovely compliment. Emma, um, don't mind a niche joke, I love a niche joke. Thank you for tuning in, Emma. Maria, love Ireland and Irish night in. That looks like a gorgeous spread, doesn't it? It's very Beautiful. fancy, beautifully Lovely. presented as well with the lemon at the back. Yeah. yeah. And a message from Wallace Bird. That really means a lot. Thank you so much for the memories. Thank you, Wallace, for the songs. And thank you for being part of an Irish night in. It's such a pleasure to have you part of it. Coleman Hamilton is getting in touch as well. Hello to you. And dear Mid Kelly, greetings from the Western Cape. Wow, watching all the way over there. There. Oh, we have a limerick coming in as well. There is a young man named Dan, as a carpenter travels the world in a van. He likes to drink beer, shows never no fear. Fear, best greetings to our man named Dan Freedom. That's from Lucia Fröhlich. That is some talented limerick composition, isn't it? And all done so fast as well. well yeah, that was absolutely brilliant. All right. Arno Kifa as well is having quite a spread there. James Parson, been waiting a while for this. So have we. So we're delighted that the time has come. Thank you so much for all of your comments. <laughs> now, it's time for our main course. It's beef, but if, like me, you're a vegetarian, we also have a recipe for a delicious stuffed portobello mushroom. If you go to dfa.ie slash an Irish night in, you'll be able to watch a video on how to prepare it. Now it's back to Andy and Zoe to guide us through making our main course. All right, guys, we're now going to head into the main course. We have a few elements we're going to assemble to create a beautiful meal. So we're going to start with our smashed potatoes. Yeah, seeing as it's an Irish thing, we're going to start off with the potatoes. Potatoes are pretty German too, gotta say. For sure, for sure. We're There's some crossover potatoes. elements there. Yeah. So what we've got here is really, really small Melish kartoffel. Uh, you gotta use small ones. We did yesterday's, we parboiled these yesterday and it makes them nice and soft. But because we did it a day before, it just gave them a little bit of time to dry out so mm. they're not full of water from the boiling process. So what we do with these little potatoes is we just, I've got some oil heating in the oven and we just smash them down so they're still in one solid piece, but it just opens up the surface area on them. Also, wir haben jetzt den Hauptgang und Teil des Hauptgangs sind hier unsere äh, Smash Potatoes. Auf jeden Fall haben wir die am Tag vorher schon gekocht, damit man die über den Tag austrocknen kann, damit die richtig yeah. trocken werden, damit man sie gut dann am nächsten Tag, dann, wenn man sie tatsächlich an dem Abend dann benutzt, dann äh, runterdrücken kann, so wie Andi das gerade macht um sie dann in den Ofen zu tun. Andi hat auch vorhin schon Öl in den Ofen gestellt, dass sie, damit es sich ein bisschen aufheizt. Nicht zu heiß, ne? It's not gonna get too hot, right? No, not crazy yeah. hot. 
Just so it's a little warm. Just enough so it can get the skins nice and crispy. Right. Yeah. It's essentially like a fancy chip. You want it nice and crunchy on the outside and nice and soft. Ah, oh, we're all about on the, the chips. inside. Jetzt holt Andy das Öl, um das dann, um dann die Potatoes und dann die Kartoffeln mit dem Öl zu verbinden, damit die äh, richtig schön darin noch crispy werden, also so schön knusprig und äh, quasi wie ja, schöne Pommes werden. You want to make sure the oil is nice and hot. Get them crispy. Wow. We have about like half a centimeter of oil in here. Also ein halber Zentimeter Öl. Und wie man auch sehen kann, ist das Öl ziemlich warm. Und man möchte, dass die Kartoffeln richtig schön drin sitzen im Öl, damit die da das alles komplett aufnehmen. Yeah. And not too many. If you have too many, they won't get crispy. Genau. Also schön ebenmäßig aufteilen, damit nicht das zu gestaut ist. And then lots of salt and pepper. Ja. Yeah. Kartoffeln können Salz und Pfeffer immer sehr gut gebrauchen, daher da ordentlich raufhauen. So, now we put them back in the oven at 200 degrees for about 10 minutes and then we're going to flip them. Also die Kartoffeln gehen jetzt in den Ofen, 200 Grad für ungefähr 10 Minuten und dann werden sie nochmal gewendet. So, coming up next, we've got our charred scallion salsa verde. Mm. Pretty much every country has their own salsa verde, it just means green sauce. Scallions and parsley are something you find like all over the place in Germany and Ireland. So it's really nice to be able to bring this together on a night like tonight. Yeah. So the first thing we do is we char up our scallions. I do this on a cast iron pan that's smoking hot. Oh, that is really hot. Yeah, you want to cut them down so they fit into the pan nicely. You just want to get them nice and blackened on the outside. Wow. Also, was Andy hier macht, ist, dass er eine grüne Salsa macht, eine Salsa Verde. Und hat dafür ähm, Frühlingszwiebeln hat er geschnitten, ungefähr halbiert, weil es damit besser in die Pfanne passt. Die Pfanne ist nicht geölt, sondern einfach nur so sehr heiß und versucht. Und damit macht er jetzt, äh, dass sie eine schwarze, dass sie yeah, richtig schwarz gebrannt. Werden. Und das äh, kommt dann zusammen mit. What kind of herbs are you using for the salsa verde? Uh, so we got some parsley in there. Parsley, also auch noch Petersilie. Sherry vinegar. Ooh, also Essig. Essig, Olivenöl, Olivenöl. Schalotten und Knoblauch. Oh, Schalotten und Knoblauch. Ja. Yeah. yeah. Why do you cook them with the root? Holds it together. Oh, that so makes sense. You take sense. the root off first, and they all just go everywhere. That makes sense. Also die Wurzel dran lassen, weil so bleibt dann die Frühlingszwiebel auch noch komplett und fällt nicht auseinander. Yeah, because you just really want to char the outside of them yeah. and not necessarily the inside. The oh inside will steam a lot. Right. So you get this black charriness that just goes together with meat so, so well. Mm. You don't have to get it completely blackened, but just that each one has a pretty decent solid char. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So at this point we just want to let them cool, let them steam off a little bit. We're going to move on to the rest of the sauce. So the easiest way to do this, I like to reduce the amount of work I have to do as much as possible. Yeah, no I'm going to start off with some parsley. I've already picked these. It's like a handful of chopped parsley. Then we're going to go for some shallots. So a bit of tablespoon. That's like one shallot, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we're keeping it raw. Yeah. Also Andy hat jetzt die Petersilie, eine ungefähr eine Handvoll Petersilie uh, in den Blender gemacht. Dazu noch rohe Schalotten und yep. dazu kommt jetzt auch noch Knoblauch. Ja, yep. now we have full clove of garlic. Oh, with the skin. With the skin, yeah, when you're doing this, when you're doing it on the, on the grater. Mm. When you're doing it on the grater, you don't need to take the skin off. Just put it straight through. I hate peeling garlic. <laughs> Tell me all. Ja. Genau, jetzt so hat er eine Knoblauchzehe reingemacht. Half a teaspoon crushed chilies. Ein halber Teelöffel von Chiliflocken. Oh. Next up, sherry vinegar. This is going to give the acidity. If you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar is perfect. So you need about 120 ml of this. What I like to do here is just pour it directly over the garlic and the shallots and just leave it sit for a few minutes. That will just take the edge off them. Also Andy hat jetzt noch Essig auf die Schalotten und den Knoblauch direkt gemacht, damit äh, die sich gut zusammenfügen können und äh, ein bisschen die Schärfe auch wegnehmen. 
und kümmert sich jetzt um die Frühlingszwiebeln, um die dann zu bereit zu machen für den Blender. We just take the roots of these. Also schön die Wurzeln wegmachen, die will man nicht essen. Perfect. Nee. So now, you just want to hit these with some salt. Every about a teaspoon. You can always add more later. Can't take it away. And then about 180 mils of olive oil. Just a bit more olive oil than you put in vinegar. Also ein uh, Prise Salz. Lieber erstmal probieren und dann kann man später noch mehr hinzufügen. Und uh, 180 Milliliter Öl ungefähr. Also man möchte mehr Öl als Essig dran haben. In der Balance. And a decent crunch of pepper. Yeah. So now we just want to pulse it. We want to be able to keep the sauce nice and chunky. You don't want to put it in a blender because it's just going to totally puree it. Pulse it just means instead of just letting it run, we just hit it in little bits. And it just keeps it nice and chunky. So at this point, you just want to taste it. Oh, I want to try it. It's a little bit too much vinegar. So we just chuck some more olive oil in it. All right. Mm -hmm. Stuff like this is just always like, constantly taste as you go. If it's too acidic, add more olive oil. If it's too bland, add more salt. It's got a really nice taste already. Next thing we have coming up is a roasted carrot, beetroot and garlic puree. Oh, well, you gotta get your veggies in. Yeah, we, we start off some beautiful organic uh, vegetables from Brandenburg. We got some beetroot, some carrot and garlic. All we do here is we cover everything with olive oil, including the garlic. We wrap that up, a little bit of salt, and then roast it in the oven for somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes. Uh, like the how many degrees? About 200. 200 degrees. Yeah. Usually the carrots will be done a little bit before the beetroot, and the garlic will be done probably at the same time as the carrots. Mm. So right. once all that's roasted off, it's going to look something like this. Okay, also Andy macht ein Karotten rote Beete Püree und zwar sind das ist das hier rote Beete und Karotten aus Brandenburg und hat die dann mit äh, Olivenöl und Salz, Salz ja. hinzugefügt. Genau. Und dann kommt das in den Ofen bei 200 Grad für wie Herr lange? 30 bis 45 Minuten. So you just broadly chop them up. Yeah. Because they're, they're pretty they much cooked already. Yeah, they're, so. they're cooked all the way through. We're just going to infuse some more flavor into them. Mm -hmm. Also jetzt werden sie einfach nur grob geschnitten, weil gekocht ist es ja eh schon. Das heißt, die fallen auch schon fast auseinander. Das sieht man ja da, dass es schon super weich ist. Und das macht man dann alles in einen Topf rein. Oh, you're taking off the skin. Mm. It just doesn't bring a great flavor and so it's just a little bit tough for the puree. All right. Also Andy schält hier dann die uh, rote Beete, weil die uh, Schale nicht so gut ist für das Puree. What are you going to infuse it with? Just some wine. We're going to reduce down some wine, Red and, wine? Some, and some carrot juice. No, some white wine. White Just wine. to try and keep it a little bit light. Okay. Also, sobald es dann im Topf ist, wird dann Weißwein noch hinzugefügt. Cool. Oh, look at that garlic. So now at this point, put in a decent slug of wine. So you can see now, there's not much, not much of the wine left. So now we just want to blend all our lovely roasted vegetables together. But you could probably just use a normal, like a... Uh, uh, a little stick blender. Yeah. If all you have is a food processor, it's totally fine. Anything works, right? Whatever you've got, yeah. It's Would you like to start it off slow? It gets all the big bits. Ah. Oh. beautiful yeah yeah the combination of the carrots and the beetroot just gives it this really electric flavor also wie ihr gesehen habt hat Andy das jetzt alles püriert also hat jetzt noch ein bisschen Zitrone reingemacht einfach damit die Farbe wirklich elektrisch raus ploppt so next up we have the main course it's the Irish beef entrecote it's like a really special piece of beef is it yeah so Irish beef is just absolutely fantastic and the main reasons our beef is so good is because we have so much grass. We <laughs> yeah, have the we worst weather in the world, <laughs> and this is absolutely perfect for grass production. <laughs> True. 
generally I'm doing a steak of this quality, I just keep it super simple with salt and pepper. So what I usually do is take the meat out of the, out of the fridge about an hour beforehand, mm. just lets it come down to room temperature. You just get a much more even cook, but it also helps you get a nice crust on the outside. Right. At this point, we want to hit it with a decent bit of salt. Don't be, don't be afraid of the salt. It really helps the production of the crust on the outside. And get some pepper on there as well. Also Andy hat jetzt ein äh, Entrecote Steak ähm, aus Irland natürlich ähm, hier vor sich und äh, hat davon geschwärmt, dass halt das irische Rind besonders gut ist, weil sie halt vor allem Gras fressen und wir in Irland ja durchaus sehr viel Gras haben, weil das Wetter ja nicht unbedingt gut ist, aber das hilft natürlich, äh, um sehr viel Gras zu wachsen, wenn da so viel Regen fällt. Ne? Genau, und äh, weil, es, weil das halt so ein gutes Fleisch ist und weil es einfach von sich aus sehr viel natürliches Aroma schon bringt, ähm, braucht es gar nicht so viele Gewürze, um dann ein gutes Steak draus zu machen, sondern es reicht Salz, Pfeffer und dann ab ja, einfach. in die Pfanne. Ja. Right? What's super important now at this point is that your pan is smoking hot, as you can see by all the smoke here in the background. That allows us to get a really nice crust on the outside while keeping the meat nice and tender on the inside. So I usually just do like a small little bit of rapsil in the pan. And now I just forget about that for the next two, three minutes. Yeah, you don't want to move it, right? No, we just want to let a really nice crust develop there. Also er lässt das Fleisch jetzt einfach nur zwei, drei Minuten im heißen Rapsöl äh, anbraten. Es ist ganz wichtig, dass die Pfanne vorher super, super heiß ist. If it's still sticking to the pan, mm -hmm. we just leave it in there an extra couple of seconds. Mm. Once that starts coming up really easy, I know it's got a decent crust and it's time to flip over. Also jetzt wieder nochmal zwei, drei Minuten auf der Seite und danach wird es tatsächlich noch einmal umflippen, um einfach wirklich dieses Braun komplett durchzubekommen. Und äh, dann ist es auch schon fertig. Ja. Yeah. Are you going to rest the meat for a little for while? Sure. The resting is probably the most important part of the cooking process outside of actually cooking it. Mm. Perfect. Now at this point, we just want to let it relax for about five to ten minutes. Mm. That's all the juices go back inside and all the meat tenderizes. Yeah, also jetzt wird's fünf Minuten noch mal ruhen gelassen, damit die Säfte im Fleisch bleiben. All right, guys, so you've made it. All the parts are done. And now you can enjoy your meal and we'll see you again for dessert. Have fun. What a delicious looking main. And you can see the mushroom served up there with the beef as well. For those of you tucking in, guten Appetit. Wenn Sie auch mitgekocht haben, schicken Sie uns doch bitte ein Bild von Ihrem Essen. Wir würden uns sehr darüber freuen. And we have actually got a lot of photos coming in. Let's take a look at some of them. We have a wonderful photograph here from Coleman Hamilton. He has made quite the spread. Life is lawful has as well still enjoying a very joyful and Irish night in. That looks like a gorgeous main, doesn't that it? That looks Nicholas? delicious. It looks absolutely lovely. Well done to you and enjoy that. Now let's see what else we have got. Leanne, all set in Wiesbaden for an Irish night in. We can see Leanne was one of our 115 lucky winners of the gift box. Absolutely. Look at that. Yeah. Do enjoy those treats, Leanne. Thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, let's see what else we're getting there. Oh, wow, look at this spread. Ah, love I love Ireland. the colours. Look at that, it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Green, white and orange as well, Salmon. That Guten Appetit, guys. We hope you're enjoying the evening. Is from Bonn. Yep. From Bonn. Greetings from Berlin to Bonn. Okay, Coleman, how, yeah, we've got, we've got this one up. Let's, let's get a chance to actually read Coleman's comment there. Just loving an Irish night in so far. Hard to say which part of this meal was best, but was certainly <coughs> gobsmacked to find out that the best roast potatoes are the ones you boiled yesterday. Well, we're all learning here, Colin. Ah. Thank you for joining us this evening. I have to say about potatoes. There's How do we say about potatoes? Yeah, potatoes like anything? potatoes in Germany, they're, they're great, but yeah. they're not floury potatoes. How, how do you make your potatoes? What is your ideal serving method for a potato? Boiled potatoes, floury potatoes. And, yeah. and, and there's a saying in Cork, you know, the potatoes should be, if they're floury potatoes, they should be laughing up at you. But unfortunately, they don't laugh up here too often. They don't. So. 
That is that is true. And and you know, it's a cliche, but we are very good at potatoes in in Ireland. Um, I was thinking we were talking earlier about the food we missed, and I think mm. a lot of people have taken off things like baking and cooking during lockdown. Are there any hobbies that you have taken up since the pandemic? Oh. Uh, well, uh, leider habe ich neue, uh, keine neue Sprache gelernt. Uh, I haven't learned ancient Greek or taken up pottery or, or, or anything. Um, for, for, for me anyway, I think one of the important things during the pandemic is, is to get out and get a bit of fresh air every day. Um, I try every day to get out maybe 30, 40 minutes. Um, and, and I think we should all actually think about it. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of kind of information coming at us on the airwaves of television. So maybe get out, get a bit of fresh air every day. And it's really important. Yeah, and I think it's also a really refreshing message to say that, you know, it's okay if you haven't learned five languages or trained to do a marathon. Yep. You know, for so many people, they're just struggling at the moment between working from home and homeschooling and yep. worrying about their health and the health of their loved ones. So it's also just absolutely fine to get through the day, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and, and as someone else said before in this, it's okay not to feel okay. You know, things are, things are a little bit stressful at the moment. So hopefully there's bright times ahead, but, you know, it, 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 it's okay. Just look after yourself is the main thing during this time. Absolutely. And talking of bright things ahead, I think it's time for more music. And at this point, we'd like to invite you at home to have a think about a song that you might like to hear at the end of the night. Because later on this evening, we'll be treated to a live session from Dundalk-based folk group, the Merry Wallopers, and they are taking requests. Wenn Sie heute Abend gerne Ihr Lieblingslied aus Irland hören möchten, schreiben Sie uns bitte. Später werden die Mary Wallopers, eine Gruppe aus Dundalk in Irland, die während der Pandemie für ihre Livestreams berühmt wurden, live von ihrem Zuhause aus performen. Lassen Sie uns wissen, was Sie gerne hören würden. Next up, though, we're going back to the incredibly talented Wallace Bird, who has got me through many a winter here in Berlin, who's going to perform two more songs. She's also going to give us some fascinating insight into their history. You may well know these tunes, so if you do, sing along. So the next song I'm going to sing it, I've uh, heard it since I'm a, a little child myself, and it turns out that this is a child song. There was a game developed around it and um, it was written in roughly the 19th century uh, and it was played and sang widely in England and Ireland. Um, so yeah, it's called A Tell Me Ma. Wait 
tell me who is she? All right, this next song that I'm going to sing you was written in 1905 in New York by Tin Pan Alley duo Schwartz and Jerome. Um, the fact that it was written in New York shows the influence that Irish uh, immigrants had over music in America and across the world. So this song is called My Irish Molly O and do sing along. All right. Molly dear, now did you hear the news that's going around? Down in a corner of my heart, love is what I found. Every time I gaze into your Irish eyes so blue, they seem to whisper, darling boy, my love is all for you. Oh, Molly. Wouldn't you do the same, my Irish Molly, oh? Molly, dear, now did you hear? I furnished up the flat. Three little cosy rooms with a bath and welcome on the mat. It's five pounds down and two a week. We'll soon be out of debt. It's all complete except they haven't bought the cradle yet. Oh. safely away they say that's why i love you ah but molly that's a shame if you only had 99 i'd love you all the same oh molly my irish molly my sweet akushna All right. Woo. That was really beautiful and so interesting what Wallace was saying there about how My Irish Molly O was actually written in New York in 1905. And I think it was a cover by Dudanon in the mm. 70s that made this song really famous. Irish emigrants have left such an incredible cultural mark wherever they've been. You have a lot of experience abroad, of course, as an ambassador, including some years in China. What elements of Irish culture did you encounter there? 
Yeah, I, I, I was honoured to serve in China, in Shanghai from 2004 to 2008 as Consul General, and it was a great time. Um, it was great to see young Irish families coming into China at that stage, and yet still they were bringing their culture, music, Irish dancing. It was just part of the way of life that they brought with them. I suppose for Irish people living abroad, it gives a way of, of coming together, uh, and that, that's the real value and the real strength of it. I think it's also a way of preserving our culture. Um, you know, and it, it's changed over the years, I suppose, a little bit. It was probably kind of the Shannos in former times. Uh, now it's probably more the Irish dancing. Um, it, it, it's, it's Irish music. Um, you know, for, for example, here in Germany, uh, if, if you look at Irish music, take, take the, the, there's a plethora of Irish pubs across Germany. And thanks to people like the Irish Pub Association of Germany, like they, they, they ensure that Irish music continues and, and it becomes it becomes a little bit of a focal point as well, like you know, like for for for, uh, for people arriving here for immigrants, just just to integrate in, and then to kind of they get into to, into normal German society. Absolutely, but, and yeah. I, I say even as an Irish immigrant myself in Berlin, there's just so much culture on offer. Yeah. I was amazed when I first moved here that there was a Conor na Gaeilge that meet every Absolutely. second Wednesday, I yep. think, to speak as Gaeilge. There's Irish dancing here. There's yeah. a big GAA scene as well. It is just incredible. And there is something very different about experiencing your culture abroad. You know, you have a different identity when you are enjoying Irish dancing in Germany as an Irish person compared to in Ireland. And I was wondering how that is for you when you see this different iterations of Irish culture all around the world. It must be taken up by the local communities in different kinds of ways. What can you tell me about that? I, I, I think, to be honest, it's a great source. It's a source of great pride, and it's a bit humbling as well when you go to some of these places and you see the vibrancy and kind of the energy and enthusiasm people have just to preserve Irish culture. It brings people together. It brings Irish people together in in, in Stuttgart, in Würzburg, in Munich, wherever it happens to be, um, and also as well, like there, there, there's there's a great number of kind of German Irish societies here as well, and they're involved as well. But it's really the Irish cultural organisations which are kind of. The, the, the heart of, 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 of preserving and driving Irish music here, I think, in Germany. Also as well, it has to be said, <clears throat> German people, I think, have a real genuine love of Irish music. I think so too. Yeah. And I, I, I really, I, it's, it's hard to explain, but I think it's kind of the Celtic mysticism or, or something like that. But it really appeals to German people. There is an incredible goodwill <coughs> towards Ireland that I've noticed, even if I tell yeah. someone I'm an Irish person, often the first thing they'll ask is why I left. Oh, you know, it's yeah. such a beautiful landschaft. Why would mm -hmm. you ever go? Mm -hmm. um, and even one time, you know, well before the pandemic, when random encounters on the train were commonplace for me, I remember getting into a conversation with an older German woman and she asked me where I was from. And I told her, he said, oh my goodness, I just love Ireland, everything mm -hmm. about it. It's just the most wonderful country. And I said to her, oh, really, you know, where, where have you been in Ireland? And she said, oh, no, 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 I've, I've never actually been there. But I just see it in films and I see this countryside and the people and the music. So I think we're certainly transmitting something yeah. that is arriving in German culture. Yeah. And I and, think... And absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think as well, if you look at people like, you know, older generation people, um, they studied a book called Irishes Tagebuch uh, in, right. in school written by Heinrich Ball, like who went to Ackle Island in the 1950s, a very different Ireland, but it really resonates with German people and it gives them an image, a very, sometimes, you know, it can be a, a bit of a romanticized Absolutely. image, but that's fine. Um, you know, it gives them a real kind of image and a vibrancy about Ireland. And uh, in, 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 in fact, you know, like the, 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 the Heinrich Ball Foundation is still there with, with, with the house uh, in Ackle and his son is very active here. And in fact, we, we started an award here for uh, just last year for German people who make a contribution to Irish culture. And his son, René Ball, was the recipient. Oh, that is really yeah. lovely. Yeah, there is just so much going on and we could talk all night about Absolutely, it. Yeah. But I think it's time now for another game courtesy of Lisa McInerney and this time we are extra excited because Lisa is actually joining us live via Zoom all the way from Galway in Ireland. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us on an Irish night in. We have been enjoying your word games so much this evening. Nicholas and I have even tried our hand at some tall tales and some lyrics ourselves. Um, we've been so struck, we were talking about this earlier as well, at how indirect communication is in Ireland. <laughs> Um, you talked earlier with the tall tales about how you tell it with a straight face, but a twinkle in your eye. 
And of course, you are not just an oral storyteller, you are a novelist. So I was wondering if you could tell us, how do you transmit that onto the page? Oh, it's so difficult, actually. Um, and that's one of the things that I really want to, to get right. Um, for me, it's, it's all about trying to capture that kind of playfulness of language. And something that I would like to say is particular to Irish people, but I'm sure that people all over the world are, are just as playful. We can't really cl lay claim to that completely. Um, but like trying to get that down on the page is is the real joy in it, really, isn't it? Um, I guess there is a thing where you're kind of hoping that the inflection will come across. And this is where I think audio books are brilliant because I am told that um, it's much more fun to listen to my books than it is to read them. <laughs> well, that is no bad thing, I think. Um, and we should say as well that your books have been translated into several languages, not only German, but Italian and Serbian. I think you said Macedonian as well. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the process of trying to translate Irish idioms into these languages. Oh, it's so much fun. It's it's um I obviously I don't do any of the translation myself, guys. That's that's <laughs> nothing to impressive. do with me. So. <laughs> um so generally the translations that I think work best are where the translator gets in touch and we have a relationship and a back and forth. And it really does amaze me the different things that are picked up on by different translators, um, what travels well and what doesn't. And it's often the idioms that I think won't travel at all. I'd be like, oh, no, how do I explain this? So there's, there's a bit in my second book, um, The Blood Miracles, where I had said that a character didn't have a pick on him. And like where I come from, that would mean he's extremely thin. But another translator had gotten that incorrect, incorrectly and had assumed it meant he had no clothes on. And I was like, oh, no. So I got on to my German translator, Werner, and I said to him, oh, just I, I don't mean to overstep the mark, but I really, really want to tell you what this is about. And he went, oh, no, my wife helped me with that. That's fine. It's absolutely, it turns out he's married to an Irish person, so he was OK. <laughs> that, is, that is ideal. We should probably point out at this point as well that um, the titles of your German books, The Glorious Heresies, The Glorreiche Ketzereien and The Blood Miracles, Blutwunder, they're both published by Liebeskind. So for any of our German viewers out there who would like the challenge of getting a sense of Irish idioms, um, that's the name for them. Lisa, uh, great, great to have you from, from Galway tonight. Can I just ask you, what's, you, what's the funniest idiom you think? I, we were talking about this earlier, but like the funniest one you really had a problem translating. Oh God, that I've had a problem translating. Do you know, it's it, often it's not a case of the actual idioms themselves being difficult to translate because I don't know if you're aware, but there are like amazing dictionaries like online of Irish slang for people who want to understand them. So a lot of the times my translators, they got them really easily. But as to my favorite Irish idioms, I think unfortunately quite a few of them are insults. And one of my absolute favourite ones is like, if that lad had two brains, he'd be twice as stupid. Which is an awful <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> That's a good one. You have some phrases for us this evening, part of our third word game. Tell us how this mm -hmm. works and what you'd like us to do. So first off, um, the title of this game is Don't Go Your Great Crack. And I'd, I'd just like to ask both of you, would you consider that to be a compliment Absolutely. When somebody said to you, don't go, you're a great crack. Oh, yeah. You'd stay seated, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you'd be very flattered. <laughs> so where I am in, in South County Galway at the moment, but this also applied when I was living in Cork, if somebody said that to you, don't go, you're a great crack, I, the first time somebody said it to me, I was like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and actually, they were being extremely sarcastic and saying that you are dragging the mood down, just leave. <laughs> and this is, I think, such a thing about... Um, the way Irish people speak in a very, sometimes very indirect, sometimes very sarcastic way, but constantly playing with language, constantly messing mm. around with it and seeing how far they can push it and what somebody else will pick up on and not pick up on. So I've written down a few phrases that I wonder, that aren't necessarily what they appear to be. So I was wondering whether any of them on your cards, guys, like, are there, are there any that you have not heard before that you would not be confident about? I have to admit, I had a bit of an identity crisis when I looked through these because <laughs> there were two that I was not confident about translating. And Nicholas and I had a conversation about some of these earlier. The two that I struggled with um, were, she's fierce, cute, 
and he's saucy out. So maybe we can ask <laughs> Nicholas what he thinks she's fierce cute means. I thought it seems mistaken. You know, I, I, I thought fierce cute was nice. You know, somebody being somebody was nice. But Lisa informs me it's not exactly spot on. No, unfortunately, if somebody says about a lady in Ireland, she's fierce cute. It means be wary. She's extremely cunning, that lady. I mean, you, you're not going to get anything over on her. Watch out. So I think a lot of people might hear that and think, fierce, cute, that sounds like a strong female character. Maybe she's very feisty, but also pretty. I'm like, no, <laughs> it means you've got to watch out. <laughs> and the other one, that is, he's saucy out. Yeah. This is particularly um, particular to Cork, I think, really. And it means basically he's extremely important. He's very, very naughty. He's saucy out. He's very cheeky. Really? Yeah. There's <laughs> I think there's definitely regional differences here because I've heard a lot of different translations for that one. Um, I personally thought it meant that someone had run out of ketchup, but that's definitely not the, <laughs> not the right one, I believe. Tell us about some of the other yeah. ones, though, because, you know, for our international viewers, these are not mm. intuitive. So how about this, no. this first one? I will now in a minute. What does that mean? So. If an Irish person says to you generally, I will now in a minute, um, I think if you were to take that literally, you'd be like, wonderful. This per It seems a bit contradictory now and also in a minute, but I'm sure this means this person is going to get to it immediately. And it's like, no, basically what it means is I will, I will get to this sometime in the next two years <laughs> around that. And this is another kind of big one that jumped out to me when I, I moved down to Cork by myself when I was 17. And I discovered what I started referring to as the new Cork minute. So if somebody in Cork says to you in a minute, it can literally mean in a week's time. And it's it's very, very hard to get one's head around, really. So that's I will now in a minute. And equally um, sarcastic is I will, yeah. So I take it neither of you would possibly think that you can get anything good out of someone saying to you, I will, yeah. Not with that facial expression. Really, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. All, it's all about communication. You gotta see the face, you gotta hear the expression. But I will yeah means I absolutely will never do this. <laughs> There's so many here that might be curious to a non-Irish person. Mam was giving out yards. Yards is a, a unit of measurement for, for many people, first and foremost. What does this one mean? That's true. And the other thing is to give out is so um, it's intuitive in Ireland if you say to give out and it comes from the Irish language to give out means to complain. And it often gets to me that even in other English speaking countries, if I say somebody was giving out, nobody understands. They're like, oh, does that mean that they were they were passing out gifts? And you're like, no, no, no. It means they were complaining. So when you say ma'am was given out yards, that means ma'am was rebuking us. Mother was rebuking us extremely severely. <laughs> She was not happy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've had the Cork minute and the Galway minute, and we've got we've got that. Finally, go away. Would you stop? Can you use that in a sentence for us just before we let you go? So if somebody said uh, go away, would you stop? I mean, I think that another person who wasn't Irish or who hadn't lived in Ireland for long may actually think, oh, oh, they're actually saying this as a way to end the conversation. But go away, would you stop? Means. Are you serious? That's amazing. Please never stop this story. I need to find out what happens. <laughs> so it's an invitation for more. Lisa, it has been such a pleasure to have you here tonight. Thank you so much for sharing thank your you tall tales and your limericks and your translations. We're looking forward um, to trying to Thank you so much for it. having me. Not at all. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Good night from Berlin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much to Lisa. And um, if you at home know any more funny Irish colloquialisms, why not write them down in the comments on Facebook or tweet them at hashtag an Irish night in. It's great to hear from everybody uh, tonight. We, we have some great stuff coming in and to be connected in this way through fun and games, music and food. Wenn Sie Beispiele für irische Redewendungen haben, die vielleicht eine andere Bedeutung haben, als man erwartet, dann schreiben Sie diese doch in die Kommentare. Wir sammeln sie gerne. Okay, let's see what we have coming in here. Cassie Christie, an Irish night in Hauptspeise is im Ofen. Okay, so the main course is in the oven over there. Erstmal die Vorspeise genießen. Okay, so enjoy the starter, first of all. That looks incredible, doesn't it? That is great. Well, well done, done to, you. to enjoy. Christian, yeah. 
And, and this nun die Hauptspeise mit einem schönen Kilkenny Irish Red. Ah. <laughs> that looks lovely. So time for the main course. Enjoy that. Guten Appetit. Ah, uh, let's see what else we've got coming up. Oh, another uh, lucky winner of our gift box, <laughs> Lisa Caro. Very, very lucky. I love the sweet, sweet treats, treats from my box. Thank you so much, Iris. And let's see. You're very welcome, <laughs> Paul Lisa. Rose. Now we have come to an incredibly important part of the evening. It is time for dessert. And I have to say, this is one I am very excited about. On the menu is an exquisite Irish cream liqueur cheesecake. And actress Zoe Moore, otherwise known as the queen of dessert, is going to show us how to make it. If you are trying this at home, please do share a picture of your cake. This one is extremely Instagrammable. Hey, hi guys, we're back. Uh, we're now going to start our dessert. It's a New York cheesecake with a little bit of an Irish twist to it. Um, first of all, you have to start your ovens at 175 degrees and then we're going to prep our spring form. So you have that ready. You got to butter it and then cover it with paper. Wenn ihr soweit seid, dann müsst ihr euren Ofen anmachen auf 175 Grad und dann benutzt ihr eure Springform, müsst sie einfetten, Backpapier aufmachen, um äh, den Kuchen besser dann auch wieder runterzunehmen. Genau. We're going to start with the biscuit base. So you use shortbread cookies for that. I've already crushed them up. And then we get liquid butter. You can heat it in the microwave or in the oven, wherever. And then you add that to the crushed biscuits and you kind of swirl it all around and make it into a really nice base. Okay, also wie ihr seht, habe ich die uh, Kekse schon uh, zerbröselt, damit die richtig schön fein sind. Und dann kommt unsere uh, flüssige Butter hier rein. Und die vermengen wir dann zusammen, damit es ein richtig schöner Boden wird für unseren Kuchen. Do you want to do it? Nah, I'll do it. <lacht> Have you ever done a cake? Yeah, yeah. You've made a cake. It's not usually your... I'm not usually trusted with the cake. <lacht> <lacht> It's not your field of expertise. No. <lacht> Keep me away from desserts. <lacht> yeah, I mean, this is kind of a classic American dessert. But we're putting a twist on it by, by adding uh, an Irish whiskey cream liqueur. And it gives it a nice little, you know, caramelly taste to it. You know, ich vermenge jetzt gerade hier die Kekse mit der Butter zusammen. Und eigentlich ist das hier ein New York Cheesecake. Aber wir machen in die Mischung noch einen äh, irischen Cream Liqueur, also ein, was ist das, ein Sahne Likör rein. Thanks a lot. So you just need a pinch of salt, not a lot. Oops. Okay, so now that this has been mixed, I'm gonna pour it in here and we're gonna flatten it. You want it to be really flat so that the base, the base is really flat for the filling to kind of get a really nice perfect edge to it. Also wenn ihr das vermengt habt, die Butter und die Kekse, ein bisschen Salz noch reingemacht, um, macht ihr das in die Springform rein und drückt es dann runter, damit es schön flach bleibt. Man kann sogar noch mit einem Löffel das richtig glatt machen. Und dann, sobald das einmal fertig ist, machen wir das in den Ofen für 10 Minuten, damit es einmal ein bisschen angebräunt wird. Wir können uns dann schon mal um die Füllung kümmern. Now that I've pressed this down, nice and evenly, somewhat, we're gonna put this in the oven now for 10 minutes to give it a nice little brown crust. There we go. Beautiful. So now that we've got the base in the oven, we're going to start with the filling. Don't be scared, people, but it's one kilogram of cream cheese. Nicht erschrecken, ein Kilo vom Frischkäse kommt hier rein. Now, we have sour cream. We're going to add that in there. How much sour cream are you rolling with there? There is a, it's 200 grams. Gives a bit of a fluff in there, you know? Bit of tang. Yeah, tanginess. Oh. And it's also a bit lighter than the cream cheese, so mm. it's, I think it's good to kind of counterbalance it. That's it. Makes now, it so heavy. our Irish cream liqueur, we just add that right in there as well. That's what kind of nice. gives that special note. A decent note. amount. Yeah, it's like 120 ml and maybe a schluck, as the Germans would do. So, um, ich habe jetzt 
die, äh, den Sauerrahmen noch reingemacht, das sind 200 Gramm. Und den irischen Sahnelikör, 120 Milliliter. Und einen Schluck, wenn man das mag. Und das machen wir jetzt hier rein. Man kann es natürlich auch mit der Hand machen, aber das ist ein wenig bequemer. Fünf Minuten lang ganz langsam vermengen lassen. Ich füge jetzt noch den Zucker hinzu. Das sind knapp 300 Gramm. Wer es ein bisschen weniger süß mag, macht ein bisschen weniger rein. Und das so peu à peu auch noch da reinfüllen, damit sich das alles sehr gut vermengen kann. So, I've got the sugar here. I'm gonna add that slowly to the mass, just to you know, give it a chance to slowly incorporate. And then you're gonna let this run for about five minutes, just to, you know, get it really nice and smooth, really slowly, just to let everything incorporate. You might want to check the base. It's had a few more minutes. What do you think? Still a little bit light, getting dark around the edges. Yeah. You happy? Like one more minute, one more minute. And then we're there. But while you're at it, you might as well start prepping the hot water for the bambari. It's a fancy word, but it's, it, it just means that you add a little hot water while you're baking the cheesecake underneath the cheesecake, just to give it a chance to cook through more evenly and uh, to prevent it from browning too fast. Andy bereitet jetzt gerade das heiße Wasser vor, was wir dann ähm, unter den Cheesecake machen, wenn wir den backen. Genau, das heißt Bain-Marie, also Bain-Marie. Is that now boiling water or just... No, it's just hot water. So how long do you have to whisk up this for? I think a good five minutes. Yeah? Yeah. And I mean, baking is about, you know, taking your time, really enjoying it. Honestly, this is best made the day before your fancy dinner. It'll give the cheesecake so much more time to set and like, you know, you can prepare it beautifully at home you know, in your own time, and then the day of, it's like all ready to go. Already done, done of think about it. Yeah, and you don't want to, after you've prepared a beautiful dinner, you don't want to then, you know, invest all the time to prepare For sure. a dessert. And Stress this is reduction. Just, yeah, yeah, and that's what baking should be. Solid. Yeah, we're going to let that cool down for a little bit, because we don't want the, oil, the, the, the filling to be shocked by the hot temperature of the base. Cool, might crack it up. We actually have to lower the temperature of the oven now cool. to 160 degrees because the cheesecake does need a high temperature to cook. Also, Andy hat jetzt gerade die Base rausgeholt, also den Boden und äh, den Ofen jetzt noch auf 160 Grad runtergestellt, weil der Cheesecake braucht einfach nicht so äh, eine heiße Temperatur um zu backen. We're gonna now sift the flour into it. Let's hope this doesn't get messy. Well, baking's supposed to be a little messy, right? At least that's my philosophy. It's fine. All right. You want to sift the flour because you don't want it to get all lumpy in there because it's a cheesecake and you would taste like lumps of flour and that's not really nice. So you put it all in there. It's 60 grams, so it's not a whole lot. We're being very stingy with the flour. Also, ich habe jetzt hier das Mehl, all-purpose flour. Also, Mehl, das ist die Typ 400 glaube ich. Das siebe ich jetzt gerade hier rein. Und jetzt beginnt der ganze Spaß von vorn. Und es darf wieder gemixt werden. So we're gonna let that incorporate. I mean, baking really is just a game of patience. Wir lassen das jetzt hier ein bisschen vermengen, damit es eine Masse wird. Und dann kommen noch die Eier. Das, sind die, das ist die letzte Zutat, die wir hier noch hinzufügen. Und dann ist es auch schon fertig. Und dann mache ich jetzt ein Ei nach dem anderen rein. Also es muss tatsächlich einzeln dazugegeben werden, damit sich die Masse an das Ei quasi gewöhnt. I'm now adding the eggs, one by one. We have three eggs. And we're just waiting for it to incorporate. Bringing it all together. Yeah, let's kind of kick it up a notch. Cool. Yeah, you can see it slowly coming together as one mass. And then um, once that is finished. We're going to fi fill it into our spring form. Make it all nice and even so it looks nice. And then we're going to put it in the oven. Add some hot water to the baking sheet that's below it. And then we're going to cook it for 50 minutes. Cool. Yeah. 
Also, wenn das letzte Ei jetzt drin ist und das alles vermengt ist, äh, werde ich dann die fertige Füllung auf den Boden hier gießen und dann schön glatt streichen, damit es gut aussieht. Dann packen wir das in den Ofen und da backen wir es dann bei 160 Grad für ungefähr 50 Minuten. Und äh, nach 35 Minuten sollte man schon mal ein bisschen gucken, einfach wie es aussieht. Äh, gucken, ob dann ähm, wie die, das oben aussieht, weil es kann dann nach einer Weile ein bisschen braun werden. Und falls es ein bisschen zu braun werden sollte, macht man einfach Alufolie drüber, um das zu schützen. Aber bisher habe ich das noch nicht gebraucht. Aber es ist ein Tipp, falls man, falls dazu kommen sollte. Alright, I think we're getting there. So how do you know when it's done? Well, I mean, you just got to... Yeah, I've seen a few bits and pieces of egg white. So yeah. we want to make sure that it's all incorporated. Otherwise, you don't have like that even creamy... Consistency, consistency. through the whole thing. Yeah, because cool. when you cut into the cake, you really want to have like that creamy slice, right? I mean, it's a whopper of a cake. Yeah, a kilo of cheese is pretty <laughs> solid. <laughs> you want to make sure that that water isn't boiling. Yeah, I just... Yeah, that's a down. slow boil. Yeah, you can turn it down now because we're almost ready to fill it in there. I mean, really, this cake is pretty straightforward. Once you have all the ingredients prepped, you can just all throw it all together. There's no huge science behind it. You don't have to whip up egg whites or do anything fancy. So I feel like it's good for any stage of baking you're at. Yeah. yeah. And once it's all incorporated, you just fill it in there and then it just bakes. All right, so now we've got our filling done and we're gonna pour it on top of the base. Wenn ihr diesen, die Füllung fertig habt, macht ihr sie auf die Base. Oh, look at that. That's silky smooth. It might even fill up the entire spring. That's a big form. old cheesecake. All right. Now, let's scrape it all up. Also, wenn ihr das alles hier rausgefüllt habt, versucht, dass es einigermaßen ebenmäßig ist. Weil es dann einfach schöner aussieht, wenn es gebacken ist. What I do, I just kind of wiggle it around. Get the air bubbles out. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and you kind of just like give it a little jiggle. That helps to even it out. Makes it nice and flat. And then maybe pop a few of those bubbles. Because you'll see those bubbles once they were baked. All right. And now let's put it in the oven. Beautiful. Yay. We're putting in the cake. Now. So it's just kay. middle shelf. Yeah, middle shelf. 165 degrees. 160. And now we, may I have this? Thank you. Can you help me with the hot water? For sure. Okay, you take out the sheet and you add the hot water in there. You better not splash me. Oh, you'll be fine. Also, wie ihr seht, wie Andy das hier reinfüllt. Is that enough? You'd like some more? A little more. A little schluck. Thank you. Und es ist wichtig, dass es schon heiß ist. Danke. Damit es nicht sich nicht erst noch aufheizen muss im Backprozess. So, hier drin bleibt es jetzt für 50 Minuten. 50 minutes. 160 degrees. And let's say, after 35 minutes, you give it a quick look. Nach 35 Minuten einmal kurz gucken, wie es aussieht. Und dann immer mal wieder reinschauen, schauen, wie der Kuchen aussieht. Genau, aber 50 Minuten bleibt er jetzt erstmal drin. Und danach, ganz wichtig, ihr müsst den Ofen ausschalten nach 50 Minuten. Und lasst den Kuchen aber noch drin, damit er noch, damit er ganz langsam sich wieder abkühlen kann. So, we're gonna, after we've baked the cake for 50 minutes, we're gonna turn off the oven, but we're gonna keep the cake in here for 35 to 45 minutes depending, um, to let it cool down really slowly so that the cake can keep its fluffiness and can, you know, you know it, it doesn't get shocked by the sudden cold. And then we're going to have some delicious, delicious cheesecake. Looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. All right. Now comes the big moment. I'm going to cut into it the cake. It came out really nice. Ooh, it did. I don't want to muck it up by now. Okay. Now, a nice little tip I once got was to heat up your knife in just hot water because it gives a much better cut. You can really cleanly cut into it. 
Now. Ooh, that's looking good. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Now, that's beautiful now. Now, do you want to give it a try? For sure. Lucky privilege. Oh, that's beautiful. Mmm. Is it good? Mmm. It's so good. And crispy base. Super luxurious cake. Yeah. And just that little twang from the cream liqueur. Yeah. Which really brings it together. Absolutely delicious. So guys, have fun making this at home. It's a treat. And, you know, you might need to eat it over a few days because it is a whopper. <laughs> but yeah, guys, enjoy. Have fun. That just looks incredible, doesn't it? A New York cheesecake with Irish cream liqueur. I think it's the best American Irish cultural fusion since my Irish Molly O. We should say at this point that a lot of you have been writing in to remind us that our fire was uh, burning out. So we've added some logs. You're concerned that we might be getting cold, but as you can see here, we have it crackling again. Thank you for your concern. Now, come here to me. If you thought the night ends with dessert, you'd be fierce wrong because we have something very special lined up for you. The Merry Wallopers have shot to fame in Ireland during the pandemic, especially due to their live streamed performances from their shed turned bar. And we are delighted to welcome them now live from Dundalk. Hello to the Merry Wallopers. Welcome along. How is? Hey. 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 There we are now. We are doing very well. well. <laughs> How have you been enjoying your Irish night in so far? Brilliant. Great. We, have, we have the little box here. Uh, it's been very hard not to just tear through everything in it, but we're trying to control ourselves. I'm seeing so, a couple of empty yeah, looking right. bottles there. Yeah, there's a few, but they, don't mind them. It's they're not empty yet. They're nearly empty, but it's all the box. Because I think actually your your origin story had a little bit to do with playing for drink in the pubs. Is that right? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it, but uh, actually the way we started and became a band was because, uh, well, me and Andrew here are brothers, and uh, Sean is our friend, or we'd like to think. Yeah, and, that's uh, what you think. We, we started going around pubs in Dundalk, and we were we were just looking for free drink, and then people started trying to give us money and drink. We kind of became a band by accident, but, but we, it, we've always loved Irish know, music, so... We're delighted with it. It's been it's our mission out to, well. to, to bring the tradition forward to another generation. It definitely yeah, seems it's like fun. it's a it's a winning formula anyway. You're in a yeah. very interesting place at the moment. Tell us where you are. Uh, this is a uh, this is our shed upstairs in our shed. That's why I've got such a big coat on. Uh, uh, <laughs> so so we not turned as cozy our, as it looks. Uh, yeah, it's not as cozy as it looks, but it is quite cozy. We turned our shed into a pub because uh, when we were doing we do these live streams every month, pretty much every month. And uh, as we were doing the live streams, we uh, we needed a set, so we, we built a pub, and we've been live streaming from this pub for the last year, nearly. That so is, that's what that's where we are. That is incredibly impressive, isn't it? That sounds great. And uh, hi, it's great to see you from Dundalk this evening. How are you doing? How are you? That's great. Bada bada, thanks. It sounds like you have a winning yeah. formula, though, like music and beer for singing. Like, what else would you want? Yeah, uh, it, yeah, it, I it's know. It's deeply rooted in our... In our uh, <laughs> Culture. But, uh, it's good yeah we invented a virtual pub experience using the most modern of technology so <laughs> it's, uh, it's like nasa up here in the dot i'd like to know a little bit about how you have experienced the pandemic i think back in 2019 you had 153 gigs and then the lockdown happened in 2020 in march just as you were about to go on tour in germany tell you tell us about what you did after that yeah, so the week the week that lockdown came in over here and, and COVID became a real big thing, we were lined up to play uh, some gigs in Germany, where it's Rudelstadt. Rudelstadt. And, uh, and then the night after one of the gigs, we were supposed to be going down to Berlin and getting a train to the airport to go to Trafalgar Square and play there uh, in London. And then London, we were supposed baby. to be getting a train the Cork. next day to Cork to play in Cork Opera House. So... Uh, those were all cancelled within one day, all those gigs at the start of the week. So we knew that we'd have to adapt, you know, and we're, we're quite a DIY centered band. So uh, with that in mind, you know, you, you adapt to different situations. So the, the first thought that came to our head was build a pub. And then uh, the first second thought, thought that came to our head. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, you know what? It didn't take long to come up with the idea to build a pub. It's a great thing to do in an emergency. Yeah. 
but but uh, we we uh, I think we found out three days before we done our first live stream that all our gigs were cancelled. So so very quickly we we done our first live stream on on St Patrick's Day. Yeah, and uh, we'll be doing another one this St Patrick's Day. Yeah, but, but we uh, we did them throughout the whole year, and yeah. so uh, we we gained an international fan base from just playing. Uh, these gigs you know we did one at christmas there that was very that was magical wasn't it, it was. magical it was very yeah. magical yeah. and uh you know we did one at halloween where, where I, I dressed up as a vampire and you what did you i, I was frankenstein and what I were was you a werewolf and so we sung irish ballads dressed as a, a mythical creature it was like supernatural ballads which is good so we've had a great year really that sounds fantastic we've made the best of it i'm sure the oh, fans yeah. in in Rudolstadt were glued to their screens for that I was wondering, yeah. you, you said it in the pub. I, I said, I think they actually played it in the pub that night. Yeah, in Letter Kenny Irish 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 Letter Kenny Irish Pub. Yeah. So. Wow. That was good. And you are a folk band. You, you play ballads. And there is a, a real revival in Ireland at the moment of folk music. I'm interested in the difference in reception in Ireland compa compared to abroad. What have you noticed? Well, uh, Speak in Ireland, there's an excellent folk uh, uh, tradition, and even now, you know, there's bands like Lancome and Junior Brother and Lemon Cello that are all folk bands who are uh, young and they're excellent at what to do. And uh, I think the reception, uh, speaking specifically about Germany, is anytime we've played in Germany, Germans uh, they know about Irish folk music. You know, sometimes more than uh, Irish people that we meet, they know the songs. They are well aware. Like they know, like lesser known songs so i think the dubliners were quite popular over there we always get a good reception i, I think in other countries people really appreciate irish music because uh, there's so ireland is so rich in music that the people can uh, uh, they can almost take it for granted sometimes they can't because there's so much great music around so when you go to other countries with irish music i think people really like it because uh, it, it's such an old tradition and, and it's uh, it's uh, it's great you know? definitely yeah. that, that's certainly so been our experience yeah. as well you are taking yeah. requests, um, and I hope that includes Nicholas. I mean, Nicholas, what yeah. song would you like to hear? Absolutely, and, and Andrew, I think you're spot on, just to reiterate, this is the thing we find here in, in, in Germany as well, like German people really love Irish traditional music, it's great. As regards requests, I, I was, um, I, if, if, if I might just kick off, I was hoping, if possible, maybe the Fiddler's Green. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. I think it's based on a 19th century shanty, um, so yes. you know it's 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 about uh, sailors finding finding their, their their bit of paradise yeah absolutely do you want to, we'll kick off with that one so yeah super and, uh, yeah 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 no so this is a song about uh what what happens when sailors die or when fishermen die like and where they go heaven so fiddler's green is like a heaven for sailors and we'll fishermen we'll go for it now sailors and fishermen are like <clears throat> <clears throat> As I walked through the dark side one evening so fair, the view the salt water and take the sea air. I heard an adventure man singing a song, saying, Take me to your free boys, we find it not far. Wrap me up in me eyes in front of No more on the dark side of the Just tell me how she met So I'm taking a trip mid And I'll see you someday on Fiddler's Green Now Fiddler's Green is a place I foretell Where fishermen go when they don't go to hell Where the skies are all clear and the dolphins still play And the cold coast of Greenland is far, far away Wrap me up in the iron skins and your blood. No 
I saw it for Nicholas. So uh, I'm here in the tech corner now looking at, at what you're all saying about us. So be nice. We're harnessing the power, We're harnessing of, technology the power of technology. Contact. Plugged into the mainframe. So I can see what you're all saying. So if you have requests, send them in. But make sure they're good requests, for goodness sake. I keep it clean, please. And keep it clean. Try and keep it clean. I know it is after the water. Is it after? It's not after it the water. Matter. It doesn't matter. This is official. It is. It is. It, but it, officially, it's after nine. In, it's after in nine Germany. Germany. So, but this is like government so, business, look, so you still have to be clean enough. We're going to be clean enough in here. Uh, don't be being naughty, but send in your requests. I, I'm going to hand it over to Andrew now for the moment. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, if that's all right with you. Well, and you, oh. well I don't know. Uh, sing. We have a list here. Half a list. Um, we have a half a list here written. <laughs> a a list. Jim Murdoch says, come on to town. Woo! Yeah, on, Jim. Okay, here we go. Greetings from Stuttgart. I could do the whole thing. Oh! Uh, let me see. We've got up the dubs. Up we'll the dubs. we'll take it. Up the dubs. Greetings from Dublin. Lovely. Um, should we say nautical or should we go a bit more? The Dave Paddy's going to challenge her. Oh no, do something that's crack. That's just pure pure unadulterated crack. There's a list here. We can do the, the... We do that one there. Homeboy's Home. Oh, Homeboy's Home. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, do you want to introduce that? This is kind of like a song about uh, benefits of contraception and also a fable about not trusting sailors. It's a very old song. Anyway, I'll let it sound. Sailing on the main With a gaze, the respect of his captain's good name He sailed 
the shore, I want in the car to be, and that was the beginning. Oh my God, oh my God, he had this oh my God, oh my life to be, home for a while in the old country, where the oak and the ash and the body run and speed. I asked her for a candle to light me up to bed. Likewise, for a handkerchief to tie her in the head. She tended to me knees like a young one ought to do. And then I said to her, Would you laugh and with me too? I asked it for my knees. Oh, 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 I'd like to be home for a while in the old country. Where the oak and the ash and the bunny rabbit tree are all growing green in the old country. Oh, oh. I'm making no alarm. I'm thinking that a sailor lad would do to her not harm. I took her, I kissed her the whole night long. She wished the shark might have been some years long. And it's all white. Oh, I'd like to be home for a while in the old country. Where the old and the ash and the bunny rabbit tree are all a growing green in the old country. Well, early next morning, the sailor boy arose into Mary's apron, threw a handful of gold. Say, Chief, this be there for the mischief that I go. And I say, Dear, I love to have a dinner to represent. And that's all, boy, boy. My child, oh, well, it would be a girl, child, send her out. We'll go in our pocket with silver in our purse. It would be a boy, and a boy, and a jack of blue. Now, came in the third again, like his father used to do. I said, Oh, my oh, 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 my life to be on the highway, where the oak and the ash and the money rabbit trees are all. Well, the morning, me maidens, a morning take by me. Don't ever let a sailor buy an inch above your knee. Oh, I trusted one, and he beguiled me. And left me with the pair of twins to dangle on me knee. He had his home, boy, home. Oh, my life to be home for a while in the old country. That was gorgeous. <laughs> was it? Well, it's. it's I'm it's sure that you see, I'm kind of double tasking because I'm playing the bow run and I'm also I'm in the tech corner here. I'm in the tech corner, looking <laughs> at uh, looking at the request now. Sean, I believe there's a request coming in for yourself. Oh. Uh, Rhiannon Clark says the hot ash felt. Oh, Whoa. That's a good song. Great old number. Great number. R risque number. I haven't uh, got that in order. We'll, we'll play. Yeah, we'll chance it. We'll we'll chance it. We'll right. chance it. We'll you chance say it. that before everyone. You say that before everyone. No, no, I don't know. Part in the sky. So Rhiannon Clark, for you, this is the song that is called the hot ash felt about building roads. Rhiannon Clark, this is for you. Let me think. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, good evening, all me jolly lads, and I'm glad to find you well. We gather all around me now, a story I will tell. But I have a situation, and we got a hurry gob. We got a much more I think with my way to bring me in a bob. This room looks too much over since I left me near the home. The heaven and the lawn, you know, he's bring a harvest there. Oh, 
Sesame Oil. Which kindly left me like a goodie. I'll jump on your fire. Why do you plant the sesame? I'm going to tell you something. Since I'm the best man that you ever go and wage your bed. Oh, you've seen years of death on you. I'm all in all your pranks. You don't think all your birds are great. I'm not your heavy rank. Since I'm the best man that you ever go and wage your bed. Oh, you've seen years of death on you. I'm all in all your pranks. You don't think all your birds are great. A great, song. a great song about who would have thought building roads would be so much fun. I know. Imagine being forced to work so hard that you kill a policeman. And it sounds like that. Yeah. At the end. Eva Gallagher says, Cod Liver Oil, how are you? How are you, Eva? How are you, Eva? How are you, Eva? From no, Berlin. No better woman. How are you, Eva? Uh, uh, yes, we will do Cod Liver Oil and Orange Juice at a certain Woo! point. We won't do it just yet. Uh, but I will do a song now, I think. Uh, so let me see what we've got. Thank you. Lovely. Okay. I might do a... I'm going to do a song. Uh, can I do a song with just a Bowron? Because yeah. someone was saying, Bowron skin, skin a goat. There's a song about skinning a Bowron player. Oh. I heard that. There's also... A, the there's a song about killing a... Uh, oh, no, sorry. There's a song about killing a Spoons player, which is also a percussion incident. <laughs> with a bicycle. Oh. Yeah, that's a, an old... It's an unlikely <laughs> weapon to choose. Yeah. No. Someone says, building up and tearing the down header. That's that's a great choice. Uh, Rotzio. Wow. Whoa. We could do that one now. Yeah. Should we do Rotzio now? Or yeah. will I do one first with just the bow run? Yeah, you do one first with just the bow run. That was me now saying, will I do one first with just the bow run? But I'd be like a bull if I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> yeah, it's like he asked the question. I think you should do Rotzio saying, first. I want to it's do an easy song yeah. to pick up. It's called The Rich Man and the Poor Man. Oh. And it's a very old song. Great choice, and Charlie. It is. It is a great old song. Would you sing along with me on the choruses? We might. might. Oh, once there was a rich man, his name it was the Vizio. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. He held high dinners for the swanks of Jerusalem. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. And there was a poor man to work, he was in Dablium. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. He wore a bowler hat and the rim was round his neck, he um. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. Hi, Roger Rum, hi, Roger Rum. Skid a wink a doodle rum, skid a wink a doodle rum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. The poor man died and he went up to heaven, yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. A dinner with the angels at half past eleven, yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. The rich man died, but he didn't do so well, yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. The devil come up and dragged them down to hell, yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger Rum. Hi, Roger Rum, hi, Roger Rum. Skid them a wink a doodle, skid them a wink a doodle, glory, hallelujah. 
The first thing he asked for was jelly in a bowl of yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger, um. The devil said, no, just shovel on the coal of yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger, um. The next thing he asked for was whiskey and the sodium. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger, um. The devil said, no, this is no hotelium. Oh, glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger, um. Skid a my wink a do the rum, skid a my wink a do the rum, glory hallelujah, I hear a drum. And now me song is ending, the truth I have to tell you, glory hallelujah, I hear a drum. And if you don't believe me, you can all go to hell, you oh, glory hallelujah, I hear a drum. The moral of the story is that money is no joke, you oh, glory hallelujah, I hear a drum. But we're on now way to hell. Cause we're all stony broke, yum. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger, um. Hi, Roger, um, hi, Roger, um. Skid him a wink a doodle, um. Skid him a wink a doodle, um. Glory, hallelujah, hi, Roger, um. A simple message, a simple but long message. <coughs> that, uh, that, if, if you're poor, you're going to probably go to heaven. More likely. And if you're rich, you're probably going down to the down, bad man. Downtown. Down to the bad man. You're going downtown. We hope you're enjoying your uh, Irish night in. We are here with our... This is a box. Um, Show it, open it. Go on, open it, Charlie. Come on. But they've already seen what's in it. Oh, have they? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in it. It's beautiful. Oh. Uh, when this arrived at the door, it said, Embassy of Ireland on it. And now, you know what that does for us? That Our postman... Is going to be treating us with a lot more respect from now on. <laughs> with any luck, thanks for the big deal. Now. So that's we're delighted. We hope you're all enjoying an Irish night in. There was a lot of cooking going on. The great Wallace Bird uh, was was entertaining you. That's a, a pleasure and, a, and a, a a good thing to be watching in bad times. So uh, yeah, we hope you're enjoying your night. We are enjoying our night. Yeah. Can we do it? Can we do a, Can we do that one there? The, the good one. Oh, I thought we were doing the request. Uh, what was the request? Ratio. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do ratio, or we can do that. We'll do ratio then that. Right. Okay, this is a request from... You need to get the name. Hannah, Hannah Matilda. Woo! Woo! Hannah Matilda, this is a song about going on your holidays in, uh, on New Year's Eve. This we is haven't sung this in a while. We haven't sung this in a while. But it's a song about going on your holidays to uh, an island off the coast of Scotland for how many New Year's Eve? We're not that far off New Year's Eve yet. <laughs> so, Hannah Matilda, this is for you. Oh, Sean McKenna is a dirty lout. He said he'd treat us all to a bottle of stout. So as quick as we could, we all went out to a public house in Rotsio. Said I, me boys, I'd like to sing. And said I, you ne'er do such a thing. <laughs> well, I said, clear the room, we'll make a ring and I'll fight you all in Rotsio. <laughs> Oh, we had to find a place to sleep. And we were all so drunk, we couldn't even creep. But we found a place that was very cheap in a boarding house in Rotsio. We all lay down to take our ease when one of us happened for to sneeze. And he wakened half a million fleas. In a single room in Rotsio. I do 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 I do
There were several different kinds of pests. A few of them jumped inside my vest. They grabbed on my hairs and they made a nest. And they cried, Hello, Horatio! Said I, I think I'll head for home. And we swore we never more were wrong. And we're scratching till as we sing this song. Anna Matilda, that was for you. And somebody said there, Heather said, Rotsy is a brilliant place to visit. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Rotsy, Rotsy. We were we were actually asked last year to go to the to some islands off the coast of the Scotland. The Faroe Islands. The no. Faroe Islands, I believe. Is that yeah. where it was? <laughs> but we couldn't go because there I don't know if you've heard it. What? But there's a global pandemic. Whoa! Whoa. I know. I know. It's not as much it's not as exciting as you might think. <laughs> Let's not think about that. Part. I can't wait to get back to Germany. Back you know? Germany. Yeah, I'm buzzing. We had a great time in, in uh, 2017. We did a tour of Europe and we went from north to south of Germany over space of 11 days and had a great time. So long, long may it last and we'll return again. <laughs> Jim Murdoch said, just had a slice of soda bread, <laughs> woo, warm, and it was fab. Now we are Dundalkin and Dundalk is the place where we are from. Yeah, yeah. I actually had soda bread for my breakfast and I didn't even know it was an inclusion on the show today, tonight. There you go. Sean, his psychic career Living is Living the up. dream. Doesn't it? Okay, <laughs> here we go. Sally Brown. Sally Brown, that's good. We should do, uh, yes. should, should we do uh, the frost? Yeah. Anyway. The frost. Should we do the frost? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Sonia, these guys are awesome. Thank you. Woo! You're Can awesome. I have that? <laughs> this is a little song that's a bit more of a trad number. And uh, it's a song called The Frost Is All Over. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That was lovely. Oh. There you go. That was great. I enjoyed that now. Live enough out of The frost is all over. Kitty lie over close to the wall. What's happening here? That's defective. I'm gonna there has to back. be something wrong with that. That's one of the I'm ones with no widget. I'm gonna you send to, that did back. Did you see? I don't know if any of you saw that, but it shot out at the top. It was like a rocket. That has to be defective. I, there, there's going to be a strongly worded letter. I bet, I bet if it was defective, you'd still drink it. No, I won't drink another touch of that now until the lights open. You should write into the chat if you see him take... <laughs> I just saw you taking a glove of it. No, no, no. I was just cleaning up the top, the, the top of it. Uh, <laughs> right, we move on. How's the tech corner going? Can I put that over there? Let's, we're going to check there, out right? some of our tech info here. We love your live streams. Hope to see you soon in the Letter Kenny Irish pub. I love it. Woo! We'll see us over there. We will get that gig. We cannot wait. Beautiful place. Let's see what we've got. Uh, I feel out of the loop now and not, I'm not in on the, the chat. Someone was talking earlier. Uh, Rudolstadt. Rudolstadt. I hope I'm saying that right. Rudolstadt. Yeah. That's where we were supposed to be playing in last March. And alas, we did not make it. But I'll tell you what. We'll make it yet. We'll make it yet. You know, Sean, do you want Sean, to sing a song? It's time for your career. You have to do your yearly song. What song would you like me to play this year? Uh, I suppose you could do something a bit lively. Lowlands of Holland. Could you do the Lowlands of Holland? I suppose to be a neighbour of Germany. In a way, yeah. In a way. That's a very uh, a very weak link. It's not that weak. It is sound good. The right people bloody side them. Uh, D. Ah, yes. On the night that I was married, and in my marriage man, oh, there came a bold sea captain, and he stood at my bed and Sing arise, arise, young wedded man. Oh, and come along with me to the lowlands of Holland for to fight the enemy. Well, hello. Oh, <laughs> 
Woo. Wow. Have you ever been to Holland? I have been to Holland. You're a very well traveled man, Sean. I'm very well traveled. My, my, um, my auntie someone says, uh, Holland? someone says, uh, oh, that's right. Yes. Mary somebody, Willem. Somebody right, says here, looking, we give them a show. If, if, you're, if, you're, if you're watching Mary Willem, they got Holland. Nice, nice dude. Somebody, a lot of people looking for Spansel Hill. Oh, Andrew could do that. A classic. A classic. Yeah. A classic hit. <laughs> I would love a freshly poured Guinness listening oh. to the boys from Dundalk. Well, I can tell you, we you're, can't you're not the there. only one. You're not the only one. We would love one ourselves. You hear a tell of any pubs yeah. open? I see now. <laughs> can I do one more shout out? One more shout out. Is that a Sierra Nevada Michael Ferguson? Yes, it is. I'm oh. drinking pale ale tonight, not stout. Michael Ferguson got a good eye. Good eye. That man, that man, Michael Ferguson, could spot a pint bottle in a field that's 40 foot long. His eyes like a hawk. Uh, <laughs> let's see what we got. Can you play Nelly the Elephant? Is that Julian Waster? No, that's Sonia T-Ball. That's the song on. Julian Waster always plays. Nelly the Elephant. <laughs> 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 No, we can't do that. We actually don't do that, that, unfortunately. Would love the night the guards raided on these lads. That's brilliant. Can I do that, that. Oh, I do that now? Yeah, go on. Yeah. It might be a bit, it's a bit long for the moment. I think you should do Sp uh, Spansel Hill because, yeah. because a lot of people are looking for Spansel Hill. They don't want to listen to me singing the song. They do. They don't want to listen to me singing a song about pub. I love pubs, Charlie. They love pubs. The you, people you think, love you think, pubs. You think it's only us that love pubs, but everyone right? loves pubs. Right? I tell you what, uh, uh, after it's COVID, if, you know, you don't miss the water. Sorry, I'm trying to say something very wise here, and oh, you yeah, just so, so. you just <laughs> ping them over me. I'm, I'm trying say to say you right. Are you ready to listen to me? Listen to you wisdom. don't miss the water until the well runs dry. This is that Bob Marley. That's about pubs in COVID time. But you missed it even when the well wasn't dry. You were missing it even when he <laughs> had we, it in his we hand. We drank the well dry. Right? <laughs> yeah. We could oh. the well out. Spansel Hill, please, Andrew. <laughs> Heather Ard says, I love pubs. <laughs> yes. Finally, somebody. I love the passion. <laughs> Okay, it's Fancel Hill. Last night, <laughs> I dreamt you were back again. Right. <laughs> Last night, this was a sign a dreaming of pleasant days gone by. My mind been bent and rambling till Ireland night and fly. I stepped on board a vision, I followed with a dream, till at first I came to anchor at the cross in Spansel Hill. Enchanted by the novelty, delighted with the scene. Where in my early boyhood so often I had been I dreamt I heard a murmur I think I hear it still It's the little stream of water that flows through Spansel the 23rd of June, the day before the fair, when Ireland's sons and daughters and friends assembled there, the young, the old, the brave and the bold, 
Have you ever been Woo! to Spansel Hill? Jesus, it's a lovely part of the country. I've not, no. If only you could put a roof in it. Do you know, I actually... <laughs> I had a dream one night that I was in Spansel Hill. And you woke up, where were you? Dundalk. No way. When I woke up, I was in Dundalk, <laughs> lying in my bed. But that's a great old song there. A sea shanty. Someone wants a sea shanty. We could do a sea shanty. You know, sea shanties are getting very popular nowadays. Ooh. So... You know, a sea shanty is great. We can do a sea shanty, of course. We love your session listening to you here in Trudering. In brackets, it says Munich. Woo! So, good man, John. Good uh, man, I John. hope you are singing along. Pamela McMahon, we are singing along like mad here. Yahoo! Come on, Pamela. Fair play to you. Don't go too mad, Pamela. Uh, singing along like mad here in International English Library, Dusseldorf. Woo! Go on, Pamela. Uh, right, okay. <coughs> you give so, us the nice cigar we're doing. Yeah. Okay, I, I can do that, yeah. It's a bit long, is it? No? I'll do the night the guy was rated only that wasn't song. requested. This is a song about a pub that we, we uh, regularly played music in. Before the soul in the dark. Uh, pandemic, we used to go there once a week. It's, it's called Tolls Now, but it was originally called Mark's Bar, and uh, a fella called Oni O'Callaghan ran the pub. So uh, this song is about the guards raiding the pub one night, and there's Lots and lots of stories about uh, the ma magical sessions that last until six in the morning in this pub, and and uh, six in the morning three days later. Yeah, so so it's it's a it's a very legendary pub, and this is a song about a pub in Dundalk that we play in, and and we know the man only who used to run it as well. And and, and, and most important of all, this song is a sort of a supernatural song, so it's a it's designed to hex or bewitch. The uh, the people that shut down the session in the pub. So it's important that it's a, it's a kind of a scary song. One evening, the late down to Crow Street, I strayed to a bar that's famous. Doing a late trade in vodka and whiskey and red lemonade among company that's kindly and cordial. A man from Canal, he put me at me ears and he sat me down easy beside a big place. He poured me a pint and a half one that plays, and another wee drop came from only. There were lads there from Yorley, the Rock and the Hank, and some came from Belfast that never went back. And more lived convenient, the Carols and the Blacks, and every man Jack Swell and Porter. Some came from Hill Street, and more from the Case on Cross McGlen, Patriots tearing away. 
in the stream, don't a moin, it were all in the ray, and each of one kept themselves in good order. At half past eleven, I sadly prepared to return to my lodgings back where I was reared. I packed up me bags, I was filled with dull care, and then only put in a big order. And the tipplers relaxed and returned to their drinks, rejoicing that now they may not feel the pinch. Peter Short finished off the last eighth of an inch. He was sucking since twenty passing. And the music began in an old fashioned style. He traveled to hear it for many a mile. We were laughing and dancing. Away all the while, I thought I was dead and in heaven. A big dirty guard was out on the street and passing the door heard the music so sweet he kicked up his heels for to beat the retreat to summon up two of his cronies they quickly returned to the scene of the crime and they called on the company to fight or resign let the men cry pat our feet Shall we only be fine that the night that the guards are in it all is? Said the sergeant on Edgeman, Well, what's this I see? And why are so many of me on the spree? Could it be that at long last the country is free? Your conduct it is most nefarious. Oh, the country's not free, then only did say If you want to drink porter, like the rest you must pay We'd stay here if we like, in the clear light of day You know when the dark we're gregarious So the guards went around, and they took all our names And they struggled to spell, with their feeble wee brains And the some names are swear they made the great hymns and more they abandoned forever. To the roof of Mulholland, so quickly they climb for to gaze on a fire at the scene of the crime. To watch the old guards making good over time as they gather the rest all together. Now this is the curse. May the devil he roast them. High up on the ramp, the guard and the sergeant, the lad with the lamp, the dirty, mean, miserable, lousy, low terms from the all that were dragged up so lonely. May they always see so friend and sorrow and pain, may their boots never fit, may their beds never strip. And they enter up such a grand evening again as the night that the guards read it on me. May their daughters all stand and their noses all run and their necks now so red all turn green in the sun. May their teeth all turn black and fall out one by one. May starvation it make them grow bony. May their arses all fester. Dropped at their heels, made the last nine minutes. We did work with sweets, made dance for him. The fastest of real with the devil for it for only. Well, Woo! Now that is a curse, that's it's haunting. That's it's a kind good. of a Halloween sort of number, even. Uh, how much how much time have we got left? We've only 10 minutes left, so we've got two songs left. Woo! Yeah. Okay, so we've got two for a song. We got Sean for a song now, and then I'll do one more, yeah? That's fine. Yeah. I'll do uh, Cod Live Ryan and the, and, the, and the Orange Juice <coughs> after that. Well, I do. I might do this number because it was big in Hamburg, I believe. They had their own version of this. Song. Oh! Is that right? There's a German version of this one, and it was written by Dominic Beaton. Don't Which is wrote the German version? No, he wrote the oh. English, the regular version. <laughs> Not in German, okay. And uh, yeah, so there's there's a German version. It's called Hamburger Dean, and the other version is called Liverpool Lou. So. Uh, <laughs>
There you go. It's kind of Dominic Behan's song. Dominic Behan's song. Brendan Behan's brother. Is this our last song? Yeah, this can be our last song. Okay, song. here we go. A few people have asked for this. Thanks for having us on Irish yeah. Night In. Thanks we hope you're all doing well and, and uh, staying safe. We'll see you in a pub at some point when we're able to. Germany or Ireland, we'll see you somewhere. Wherever it is. Here's a song called Cod of Royal and the Orange Juice. Chances. Ah, 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 ah. 
glory, hallelujah. On the royal and the orange juice. This year, if you want to, if you want to check us again, and thanks for having us. Uh, very much. So we'll put you back on to. The we'll put you back on to the people. Yeah. Thank you so much, to the Mary Wallopers. Thank you so much, to the Mary Wallopers, for leading a great session. We hope you got to hear some of your favourite songs. Thank you to all of our participants as well. Thank you to Nicholas for inviting us into your home tonight. Thank you to all of you for your wonderful comments and photos. We've been so happy that you got so involved. Thanks to Wallace Bird for her beautiful music and to Lisa McInerney for introducing <coughs> us to the idiosyncrasies of Irish storytelling. Our thanks as well go to Andy Coslo and Zoe Moore for showing us how to cook a superb three course meal. The recipes Andy designed are still available on our website and so are Lisa's game cards so you can keep playing the word games at home. We've had such a great time tonight and we've loved connecting with you in this special way. We hope you'll join us again for more Irish culture and community events in Germany, whether online or in real life. Wir hoffen, dass Ihnen unsere Irish Night in gefallen hat. Wir freuen uns so sehr, dass Sie dabei waren und dass wir auch in schwierigen Zeiten die irische Kultur feiern konnten. Danke fürs Mitmachen und bleiben Sie gesund. Leider sind wir am Ende. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of our program. We would like to thank everyone in particular for engaging so wonderfully tonight. The number of comments, uh, we just couldn't get through them all tonight, so thank you very much to everybody. We're so glad that people could join us tonight from across Germany and across the world. I want to thank in particular this evening our production team, everyone in the Embassy, and particularly Candice Gordon, our Head of Cultural Affairs. I'd like to thank Board Bia and Tourism Ireland, who are responsible for the promotion of tourism and food. I'd like to thank Kate, our wonderful presenter, who did a fabulous job tonight. Thank you very much. I had a great evening and I hope that you have too. If you'd like to know more about the events which we have in the Embassy, please sign up for our Monats book. I hope that you heard your favourite song this evening, you saw a beautiful image of Ireland, or you had a taste of soda bread at home. Ireland has so much to offer and it's been very special to share this evening with our friends here in Germany and beyond. At this difficult time, we really hope that you enjoyed this evening so thank you very much and stay safe. Vielen Dank und bleib gesund. <laughs>